war, but insists they are concerned about the growing civilian death toll. The Pentagon has also played a support role in the conflict. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. UPI reports two weeks after the death of Freddie Gray, the city of Baltimore is attempting to return to normal after peaceful demonstrations and violent retaliations resulted in a nightly curfew and the presence of the National Guard. Sunday morning, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake lifted the curfew. Sunday afternoon, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan said Guard troops have started to depart. While the curfew and National Guard are credited with helping keep calm in the city, critics say it wasn't without cost. The economic impact was significant. They say as all of Baltimore's businesses were effectively suspended between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Further criticism was leveled at the National Guard's policing, accusing troops of paying substantial attention to the black neighborhoods while leaving white-dominated areas largely undisturbed. The Maryland chapter of the American Civil Liberties Union blasted the curfew, calling it an extraordinary measure that has clearly outlived its usefulness and reminds city residents of their broken relationship with police. The curfew began April 28th, and was scheduled to end May 4th, but officials previously said they could lift it sooner. While some of the Guard's troops left immediately, Governor Hogan said it would take about three days for the pullout to be complete. He added that it will likely take even longer for everything in Baltimore to shake off the impact of Gray's death. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the U.S. Senate Commerce Committee has written President Obama over concerns that a recently reported data breach on the White House computer system might have compromised the personal information of many Americans. The committee chairman, John Thune, said in a statement on Sunday accompanying the letter to Obama, just like any entity that handles personally identifiable information, the White House has a responsibility to notify Americans if the recent or any future breach results in a compromise. The White House said last month that a CNN report report that Russian hackers penetrated sensitive parts of the White House computer system referred to an incident it disclosed last year and declined to comment on who was responsible for the breach. It added that it took immediate measures at the time to evaluate and mitigate the activity. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. According to a report released this week, people who paint themselves silver and pretend to be statues earn, on average, $10 million per year. The Onion sat down with economist Mark Cosgrave to learn more about the money-making potential of this highly lucrative employment path. There's no more profitable career at the moment. If you compare these positions to other high-paying jobs, say physicians or mechanical engineers, you'll find that those individuals who have outfitted themselves with silver painted boxes and can move their limbs stiffly as if they were a robot are making literally hundreds of times as much. At this point, I would say that the only job that offers anywhere near that kind of earning potential is dressing up like Batman and allowing people to pose for photos with you. And those guys who play paint buckets like drums have historically done well for themselves. But honestly, the recession hit these professions pretty hard, and a lot of them are only making something like $800,000 a year at this point. It's barely even worth their time. This is the Onion News Network. Welcome to Free Talk Live. You are invited here to take control of the airwaves. Toll free, 855-450-FREE is our number. We've got Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Uh, get in touch with us in the way that works best for you tonight. The us in studio includes me, Ian, Derek J, and Mark. And don't forget, you can join us online at freetalklive.com where you can control the content. You put what you want up on our site. Other listeners can vote it up or down. In fact, Derek J, you've got a story that is right now on the top of freetalklive.com. 
and it's about a kidney donation. That things aren't going quite as planned, I take it? That's right. Uh, thanks to the government? Yes, the federal government. We'll get into the details on that, uh, but one of the other things we do before we start the show is kind of go over what all three of us have brought to the table separately. And it uh, turns out Mark, you and I brought the same thing to the table here tonight, so we should probably start with that. That's usually a good indicator. Uh, truthvoice.com, where I don't know who the author is here. Let's see, it doesn't say. Anyway, uh, truthvoice.com reporting in what continues to be a humorous story that is unfolding before our very eyes, D.A.R.E., you know, drugs are really expensive or whatever that organization uh, stands for. Something and, I, and it doesn't really stand for that. I don't. I don't remember what it. What I don't it either. Stands for, but uh, most people who grew up in the '80s and the '90s, and I think the aughts, probably know about Dare. It's this organization. I think it was drug abuse resistance education. There you go. That sounds plausible. I just saw a T-shirt with the drugs are really expensive on it, and I like that one. Yeah. Um, but anyway, they uh, they've got uh, they're in the news again, and Dare has been just over the years shown to be a completely ineffective, if not counterproductive form of indoctrination in that it's pretty easy to uh, look back at your class when you were in high school and and really realize how ineffective dare was if, if anything it could be argued that it introduces kids to drugs mm-hmm. that they otherwise might not have necessarily encountered or ever known about like I've never encountered barbiturates on the streets, and had it not been for D.A.R.E., I, I don't know how familiar I would be with a lot of the more common, uh, you know, commonly available illegal chemicals. I think uh, a, lot of, a lot of drug users got their education in whatever drug prevention classes there were out there. So uh, anyway, D.A.R.E. has been, I think, This is what it looks a- like, kids. You'll get it. Right. It's been thrown into question its e- efficacy over the years, and I, I don't know how widespread it is these days compared to what it used to be. But all that said, anyway, here's the story from truthvoice.com. Uh, Dare removed a satirical article from their website earlier today, apparently, after Truth Voice exposed the article as satire and pointed out how Dare shared it as a factual piece to their readers in an attempt to scare them or perhaps lie to them about the dangers associated with the use of marijuana. So just to bring this uh, into context, the story we're talking about here is a uh, an article titled Edible Marijuana Candies Kill 9 in Colorado, 12 at Coachella. <laughs> It, it Why are you laughing? I mean, this sounded believable to people. Are you saying this is unbelievable? To I you? saw it p- being passed around on Facebook, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is a this has got to be some kind of scam. I'm just going to wait for it to wash out. What makes you What makes you laugh at uh, at that headline? Because uh, somebody who doesn't know anything about cannabis might believe that, right? Maybe, but it would be the first time I've ever heard of in the history of the world that marijuana has killed anybody. So that's, right. that's why it's so shocking to hear that it killed nine and 12. I mean, <laughs> like, oh, you know, as though it's a regular Just occurrence. a matter of course. Yeah. And look, I understand that it's certainly easy when uh, cannabis is cooked into various different kinds of products. It is a little bit more difficult to measure a dose in that case. Um, but in the legal realm, it's easier to measure dosage because, and these marijuana candies, they're, are, they're generally available in the legal markets most commonly. It's very hard to find something like that in the underground in places where cannabis is illegal. Um, so this, this product, you know what your dosage is when you're eating it in a legal marketplace, so it's easier to regulate it in that way. But even if you didn't know, the worst case scenario from an overdose, if you will, which is almost impossible with cannabis, is you'll feel a little sick. Like if you eat too much mm-hmm. cannabis, then you'll notice it, but well, it's what, not going to kill you. What about uh, having never? I've never had a cannabis edible. Really? Never. Wow. Um, and not knowingly. Not that. Not, yeah. <laughs> don't don't know anything about it. Um, but I I remember a story where a police officer or ex police officer or whatever he was and his yeah. wife. Um, you know, called the nine one one because they had confiscated brownies, right? And he took them home and ate, and them. ate them, and they ate them, and they thought they were dying. Um, I, I assume he consumed too many. Like, you know, if somebody puts a plate of brownies in front of me, yeah, I could probably eat three. Oh, uh, like, yeah, bad idea. 
and on cannabis. Right. Like so as far as your dosage goes, you never know how much marijuana's in one of the a given brownie. Well, unless you buy it in the legal marketplace. It also sounds like that cop was unfamiliar with the effects of cannabis in general because yep. it he was talking about how it felt like time had slowed down and stopped. I'm like, yeah, that's that's normal. You yeah. know, don't worry about it. It could have been his first time right. or at least his first time with uh, with an edible which is a different kind of a high. Than, uh, than smoking the cannabis. Right. So, anyway, back to the story here. Less than 24 hours uh, after Truth Voice went to press, the article disappeared from the D.A.R.E. website, but was not replaced with an apology or correction showing that the organization lacks any editorial ethical standards when it comes to publishing content. You, When you make a mistake, uh, you know, we do this on the radio, and we do it on Free Keen, which is uh, my blog site, which you're a blogger on, uh, Derek, where if a mistake is made, you publish a correction. That's mm-hmm. the standard way to do reporting. It's just the right thing to do from my perspective. And apparently Dare disagrees. They just quit, quietly wiped it from their website. To make matters worse for the organization, one of our readers over at truthvoice.com uh, decided to email the members of the Scientific Advisory Board to point out the untruths propagated with one member of the board denying that he is even on the board. This <laughs> reminds me of 1984. There's the Ministry of Truth that mm. uh, the main character works for, and they just disappear articles, and sure. you know, they go back the in memory time. memory hole, isn't right. that right? Well, they go like, back in time and make sure that all of those articles and any references to it have disappeared. So good luck, government. <laughs> Scrape uh, the internet clean of this one. In Animal Farm, they went back and they had these animal bill of rights or whatever that they put on the wall, the barn, or wherever it was. I'm not entirely sure. It's been a while since I've read it. And as the rules changed, they would just kind of go in and wipe stuff out. And, you know, animals aren't very good readers, so they didn't really remember things. But it's like, when did that say something? You know, like they'd reference, I can't really remember. Ah, never mind. Let's go back <laughs> Chris Ringwalt is his name. He's listed as a member of the DARE Scientific Advisory Board and appears to be employed by the Pacific Institute for Research and Evaluation, responded to the inquiry and stated, quote, I don't know who you are, but please stop writing me. I am not on the DARE Scientific Advisory Board. If you have reason to believe that I am, please send me the documentation. The individual is indeed listed, together with others on the DARE website, as members of that board. In fact, there's Chris Ringwalt with his phone number and address. Uh, The plot thickens. Chris didn't think he was a member of this board. How very interesting. Truth Voice reached to the board members listed on the D.A.R.E. website, but we were unable to reach most of the members due to the fact that many of the phone messages or phone numbers rather listed are no longer in service. We were, however, able to leave Chris, excuse me, a message for Chris and speak with Sue Rush, who is the president and CEO of National Families in Action an organization focused on, quote, helping children succeed by empowering parents to create an academic and social environment where children thrive and are protected from substance abuse and other high-risk behaviors. Now, note, it's important to point out that organizations like D.A.R.E. and other prohibitionist groups, they believe that all use is abuse. So when it comes to smoking cannabis or eating a cannabis edible One usage of eating a cannabis edible or smoking cannabis is considered abuse. Any use of a mind-altering substance to these people's minds, you're an abuser, not a user. And I think there's an important distinction between those categories. Somebody who is a drug abuser is someone who, by definition, has a problem. This is somebody who is hopelessly addicted. They can't stop feeding their habit, or at least they don't believe they can stop. And so they continue to feed that habit to the detriment of their personal relationships, to the detriment of their job, uh, to the detriment of having a roof over their head. That's Mm -hmm. what can happen to someone who's a drug abuser. Drug users, however, are far more common. Drug users are people who go to work every day. And they, you know, are able to complete their responsibilities and their tasks. And then frequently at the end of the day, they will enjoy some cannabis or whatever their other drug of choice is, alcohol. Again, it's the difference between an alcoholic, an abuser, and a user, somebody who's got it under control. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. We'll tell you more about this D.A.R.E. debacle here in moments. Although, is anybody really surprised they're behaving like this? Toll free, 855-450-FREE. More coming up on Free Talk Live. Are you completely free of stress and fatigue? Well, of course not. You aren't alone, though. 
Now think about how nice it would be to begin relieving some of that stress and fatigue. Let me introduce you to a product that has and is working for me. It's called Youthful Greens. Youthful Greens. It's packed full of nature's nourishing, cleansing, and alkalizing greens, providing a powerful dose of whole food nutrition in each serving. Youthful Greens helps increase overall energy levels and reduce all that fatigue and stress on your body. And right now, when you visit freegreens.net or call 800-333-6923 and order your one-month supply of Youthful Greens for only $20, $29.95, you get another month's supply for free. That's two months of youthful greens for the already low price of just $29.95, plus free shipping. That's saving you $45. Visit freegreens.net today or simply call 800 333 6923. And hey, you're welcome. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn, you'll be inspired, you'll make new friends, you'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here. Dare. Anybody remember Dare class? For me, it's a, it's a blur. <laughs> it was, I think, probably fifth grade, I think. Because when I was growing up, Dare was only, like, in one grade real heavy, I think. I know that later they, I think they added it to more grade levels, like, hmm. to an every year kind of thing, or maybe more frequently. I don't really, you know, recall. Maybe you've had 
government schooling more recently than uh, than I have. I've been out since the late 1990s. I won the Dare Award in my Did class. You? Mm-hmm. What was that? Uh, it was an essay contest, and I wrote about how I would never use drugs because I wouldn't want to affect my academics or my family. Wouldn't it be priceless to find that essay? I mean, I have to say that. You know, I never really did appreciate the idea of saving school work or anything like that. I never understood why my mother would want to do something like that. But that would be pretty funny to read, you know, Derek at age 10 and, you know, how he felt about drugs back then to well, how I you just feel now. I regurgitated whatever the cops right. told me when they came into school. <laughs> so let's go to the phones here and your calls and thoughts. Uh, let's talk to Zach listening in Chicago. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Zach. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, so actually, I have um, an interesting dare story. Oh, good, please. Um, so uh, this is obviously this is all someone who isn't me because personally, I would never do drugs. You know, air quotes, why not? No, of course um, you wouldn't. No. But okay, yeah. So someone who wasn't me had dare class in fifth grade uh, in Pennsylvania, and we had this big, burly, scary cop, and then we had an old cop who was all you know, gray-haired, nice, and or they kind of did like a good cop, bad cop thing. It was really interesting. Really. <laughs> But um, so they went through all these things, and I just remember sitting in class and thinking, like, you know, obviously the marijuana unit was quite long. And I remember sitting and thinking, wow, this stuff does not sound that bad. <laughs> There's no way that this can be that bad. So me and a few of my friends from that class um, went and did a bunch of independent research. And it was kind of interesting how, like, the DARE programs, like, spurred this independent research. And me and – or someone who wasn't me, it's not that um, – and uh, these guys from my class <laughs> – Oops. Um, we all went uh, and did research and basically found, you know, all this information. And, you know, this is, you know, fifth grade, fifth graders. So it wasn't like very scholarly stuff. A lot of it was from like Wikipedia and whatnot. And we kind of oh, like. It must be nice up, being able to, to be in school with Wikipedia and Arrowhead.org around to counter this information yeah. in, in D.A.R.E. class. Well, Wikipedia. We didn't is, have that. Yeah, Wikipedia is going to be a lot more even handed. Um, you know, on the pros and the cons of uh, marijuana than, say, Encyclopedia Britannica, yeah, which that's is true. what I had to look at, you know, when I was in fifth grade. Go ahead, Zach. Sorry to interrupt there. Okay, no, it's fine. Um, just uh, so yeah, this, this person uh, brought up a lot, a few of these statistics and just things that were quite interesting about, you know, oh, like marijuana isn't this bad thing. You know, the studies that they were quoting were from back in, like, the 50s where they strapped gas masks onto monkeys and pumped smoke and then killed brain cells, surprisingly, because, you know, (laughs) oxygen is kind of required for the brain cell thing. Um, Yeah, if oxygen doesn't reach your brain, you're going to die, you know, basically. So if you you restrict enough oxygen from your brain, you will get brain damage. If you get, you know, if you continue to restrict oxygen, you will die. So the midpoint between death and uh, and that would be damaging one's brain with too much smoke. So it's obviously marijuana's fault, right? <laughs> All right. Anyway, so uh, so wait, uh, you so brought yeah, this so up this in class? Up? Yes, yes. This was brought up in class. Oh, and man. So the, the people who were involved in bringing this up were subsequently taken out of class by the big burly guy, brought out into the hallway and told, you can't bring these up. You know, you can't, you're, wow. you're, you're telling, you're, you're telling these other students in this class that they're allowed to do drugs. You're, you're, <laughs> you're saying that, you know, drugs are good. You're advocating for drugs basically. And I mean, this is just one of, this is one of the scariest things that I think I've ever seen is just, you know, cause it's not like they took the guns off of their heads, right? They're just, just like straight, like completely intimidating a group of fifth graders who just yeah, I mean, these guys are humongous compared to you, right? They are designed to, they're, they they know how to intimidate. They're trained uh, at intimidation, and it's certainly not hard to intimidate some fifth graders. It's a kind of a sad story, Zach, but I'm actually like a bit relieved to hear that uh, these intimidating men who have operated for so long on the tool of fear can be so easily dismantled with just a couple of facts from the internet and a couple of kids. <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, and, you know, and then obviously all this independent research further led to the people involved getting together in uh, small groups and partaking in the forbidden fruit. So, um, I, you know, I, have to, I really do have to think there for some of the greatest experiences I've had in my life with some of my closest <laughs> friends and just 
doing these great things that I never no, would have done if it wasn't for so there. So you said D.A.R.E. led to it, but when did you uh, or your friends partake in uh, the plant leafy green matter? Uh, seventh grade. Okay. So it took about a year to kind of figure out how to get it. And then oh, from there, it was just kind of <laughs> a slippery slope down to experiencing certain things we probably shouldn't have done. But, you know, for better or for worse, I came out a more intelligent person with a more open mind, I would say. Yeah, I, you know, as far as dare class goes, uh, I wonder whether it is. I, I wonder whether it's just training for future drug addicts. Um, I mean, it's That's just, what it felt like. it's it's what it seems like. Whether you know, whatever you, anybody might think of illegal drug use, it seems like these classes aren't very effective that I've heard of. I never took a dare class. They didn't have it uh, when I was in school. Zach, good story, man. Yeah, Anything else you want to share? Um, nope, just wanted to say thanks for putting on a great show and thanks for taking my call. Thanks for making the call tonight. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. We'll continue with the story about the D.A.R.E. Uh, fool, you know, the fooling of D.A.R.E., I guess. Here They uh, published this satire piece and then ultimately they got called out on it and then quietly pulled it from their website without posting a correction, admitting they were wrong. Uh, we can continue that discussion here, but I also want to let you know, if you're doing anything online... As normal, you're just surfing on your phone, your laptop, whatever. You don't have privacy. You've got to take steps to have privacy. And one of those steps that I would recommend is Pro XPN. It's a global virtual private network. They encrypt your data. So let's say you want to look up some information about something sensitive, like the topic we're discussing here, and you don't want that on your uh, work computer or something like that. Well, you can connect with Pro XPN. And then they encrypt your data connection so your internet service provider or the administrator of your network, they don't know what you're doing anymore. You can go and get ProXPN for free at ProXPN.com slash FTL. Now, again, that's ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go get started. Grab it for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux, whatever you're using. And then when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, you can use code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live. And 50, as in 50% off the price of their annual account, which gives you unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world you can connect to, private torrenting ability, and you can get past regionally blocked websites. Get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Just use promo code FTL50 over at ProXPN.com slash FTL, and they don't keep records of your online habits at all. At ProXPN.com slash FTL, get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. As we continue here, we will take your calls about whatever you want. Maybe you want to share with us your D.A.R.E. stories. What do you remember from D.A.R.E. class? I don't really remember much. I remember who the cop was. I saw her later on as an adult doing uh, liberty activism. I remember, like, I, they didn't even have, like, the D.A.R.E. character. They ended up with some kind of lion character, I think, la later mm -hmm. on. They didn't even have that when I was in D.A.R.E. Uh, you can share your experiences, though. 855-450-FREE. Hi, this is Laura Garris of Lady Talk Live. With the current threat of epidemics and pandemics threatening us and medical resources dwindling, it's time we protect ourselves. That's why I use Longevity's Immune Booster Beta 500. Beta 500 is the most powerful immune system booster you can buy. This proprietary blend provides the most studied and proven immune system booster available. Order now. Call 855-333-5239. That's 855-333-5239. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. There are two types of advertising. Poll advertising, like Google AdWords, where a consumer goes looking for widgets near them and you try to pull them in with your ad away from the other widget purveyors. Then there's push advertising, where you push your message out about your great widgets and attempt to convince people who weren't thinking about widgets at all that what they need in their life right now is your widget. Radio is push advertising. In the course of a week, there are probably over a quarter million good folks listening to Free Talk Live, and they could hear your message. We're having a sale right now, and it ends May 15th. 200 30-second ads 
for $1,997. That's like 10 bucks an ad. Find another show with that kind of rate with 150 plus stations. Email me. Mark Edge at marketfreetalklive.com. And I'll set you up. You don't need to have an ad. We'll produce it for you. Buy 200 30 second ads by May 15th and get them for less than $10 a piece. It's a big savings and you don't want to miss it. Email me, Mark, at freetalklive.com now. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Now, a lot of little girls do ballet even though their fathers couldn't care less and don't see what the big deal is. But one talented little prodigy actually choreographed a whole ballet that her father could enjoy and even look forward to. Let's meet Erin Kemper and her father, Jack. Hi. Thanks for having us. Erin, how did you do that? I thought about all the things that my dad likes to watch and put it into a ballet. Well, we have a special treat for you today because Erin is now going to perform her new ballet. When I pay the bills, I get to make the rules. We can't afford that. World War II. I miss your mother too, but we're gonna have to do the best without her. Go Redskins! Bravo! Well done. Boy, I wish she were mine. You know, my two girls are grown up, but you still couldn't pay me to watch one of their a cappella shows. <laughs> what inspired you to create this amazing ballet? I'm really inspired by the theme of my dad paying any attention to me at all. Now, at the end, I hear she just put the game up on the big screen. I don't know where she gets it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Onion News Network. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Welcome back. More Free Talk Live happening now. You can dial in, share your DARE experiences, the drug abuse, resistance, education program that is so commonly found, or at least it was when I was growing up, in government schools. And then I think it, it peaked up later on in the aughts and then kind of it, – it got, I think, legitimately criticized as pretty ineffective. And I don't – I feel like I heard stories about them pulling it from some schools, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's still really, really prolific and uh, really popular. What's your experience? Are you a parent – with a child in the government schools. First of all, you should probably get them out of the government schools, but as long as they're in the government schools, you have some experience, you know a thing or two about what they've been going through. Is D.A.R.E. class still happening? Uh, if you're in the government schools right now, what is the level of uh, intensity that they're pushing this message? Is it something that you know you have a class you have to go to in high school? Is it a middle school, elementary school only thing? Honestly, I don't know the status of D.A.R.E. You can share with us here at 855 Four fifty free, and uh, tis the season for Mother's Day gifts. You really need to start thinking about Sherry's berries. Uh, whether you've done if you've done Sherry's berries before, I don't need to tell you about it because you know how awesome Sherry's berries is. Unless, of course, you've been so unfortunate to have mailed Sherry's berries to someone who doesn't live nearby you, because then you wouldn't be able to share them with someone, and uh, and also not bought some for yourself. And then you have to go off what other people are telling you. And I'm sure they've told you if they've received Sherry's berries that they loved. Sherry's Berries, because how could you not? Derek J., you and I were sharing some Sherry's Berries uh, last week. Delicious. Mm -hmm. They're my favorite. So good. They're actually uh, delicious strawberries topped in white milk and dark chocolatey goodness with chocolate chips, nuts, and decorative swizzle. Derek J., do you have a favorite of the three types of chocolate they're using? Yeah, the double dark chocolate. Yeah, I have to say I'm leaning towards that. I really like the white chocolate ones, but yeah. I think I think what makes the dark chocolate ones my favorite is the chips on top of it as well. Yeah, double dark chocolate's yeah. always been my favorite cookie, favorite everything. I find myself hunting down the little chips because they can't I all did stay too. on the strawberry when you bite it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Like it's so this this 
you know, chocolate coating, and then some yeah. of the little chips will fall, fall off, off onto the plate. And of course, you finish the berry, and it's delicious, and you know, a premium berry covered in chocolate, and it's it's really good. Those dark chocolate ones are really good. And then you're hunting around for the little chips I on totally the plate. I totally did that. <laughs> Uh, you not the plate, but the box, right? They'll I'll just do them right over the box. I don't. Drop yeah, no, no. I I like them. I like to get one of each berry uh-huh. and put them on just a small plate. Oh, that's so funny. One, one of the small plates, and then that way I've got the three of them. And I get the whole berry experience. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got their own little way of eating Sherry's Berries, I guess. So you can go and grab some Sherry's Berries for mom over at berries.com. You get an over 40% savings by using code FTL. That means you get freshly dipped strawberries starting at just $19.99. But I would recommend you double the berries for just $10 more. You're going to want more berries rather than fewer. So go and grab them over at berries, B-E-R-R-I-E-S dot com. Click the microphone in the top right. Type in code FTL to get the deals. And there's other stuff there as well. Uh, chocolate, uh, or there's uh, like chocolate covered pretzels, cake truffles, and more. Go to berries.com. Use code FTL. And that helps us get credit for your purchase for your mom. Or maybe for you too, or the wife, or whoever you care about. They'll love Sherry's Berries. Berries.com, code FTL. We're talking about D.A.R.E. Uh, They got caught big time, caught red-handed by lying, essentially, to their uh, customers, lying to their website visitors. If you get called out on posting something that was misinformation, it wasn't a lie maybe at the time, right? They heard about this story. They saw a story on the Internet claiming that people had died from eating Cannabis-infused edibles, candies specifically. People died, what was it, in Colorado, in Coachella or something like that? Um, Anyway, the claim was that like over a dozen people, close to two dozen people, had perished as a result of eating these candies. Which, false story, no one's ever died from cannabis ever, uh, except if a bale falls on your head from a great height. No one in recorded history has died from consuming, consensually consuming cannabis. I heard you have to consume something like 40 times your body weight in like 15 minutes. It's so basically it's, impossible. It's, it's impossible to do. So they got snookered into this, uh, believing this was true. They posted it on their website. Now, because got it was an out. edible, though, people have, there's been some stories about edibles, animals getting them, kids getting them, that kind of thing. So there's this, there's this newfound fervor around edibles. So I think right. that this makes... You know the story that much more believable to somebody who might be sitting on the sidelines. I was highly skeptical when I saw the story, <laughs> but uh, you know, and I'm not some mar- big marijuana user or anything like that. I you know haven't smoked marijuana in quite some time, mm. um, but you know, I I I knew to wait around because I figured that this story would be one of those. Not marijuana, not even once. Silly stories where it's just a joke. Yeah. and It was a joke, but Dare didn't get the joke, so yeah. they reposted it believing that it was true uh, or knowing it was false and posting it uh, as though it were true. But let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say they didn't know. They, you know they're these drug warriors. They believe the propaganda. They saw the headline. They thought it was true. They reposted it. Once you get called out and proven that this is false, that this was satire, that this story was a joke, if you don't post a correction— and you just quietly pull the story down, I consider that to be dishonest. I consider that to be you've lied at that point. Unless you post a correction admitting that you were wrong, uh, admitting that you made a mistake, to just try to cover it up is a lie. What do you think about that? Well, just imagine how it would look if dare.org published a, an article saying, whoops, it would look terrible we to them. messed yeah. up and nobody died. This was a satire article and... We here at Dare.org thought this was real. I mean, imagine what some of their regular readers, if there are any, would think. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I'd have to go pull up the Alexa ranking for the Dare website. I mean, they're no longer credible. If they're going to be a propaganda machine for the federal government and the drug war, then they have to remain quiet about the truth. Yeah. I, well, if they want to look like they have any intellectual uh, honesty, then they should no, have done they're not it. concerned but about that. But they don't. That. No, you're right. I mean, historically, they never have had that. And now it's just laid out there for all to see. Well, they're already lying to kids on a regular basis. That's their job to right. lie. So what's the difference? So I'm looking them up here on Alexa.com, which is a rankings website. 664,000, the, six, the 664,098th most uh, popular website is in that the more world. or less popular than Free Talk Live? I believe that is uh, less popular hmm. than freetalklive.com. 
which is not no actually i'm sorry freetalklive.com has been slipping down the uh, the charts unfortunately we're at 729,000 so, so about so dare.org in the same range i guess I see. yeah less than a million is considered to be pretty good so we've been higher on that list and our alexa is not scientific i'd like to point out it has nothing to do with actual web stats it has to do with people who are using what's called the alexa toolbar hmm. and that is a subset of the internet audience so it's a small subset. A wow. very small subset of the end. Yeah. So basically, if you want to manipulate your Alexa ranking, you just encourage people to install the Alexa toolbar. And then if they are regularly visiting your website, your site will go up. Uh, you hear rankings. that, Free Talk Live listeners? I am not suggesting that, Mark. That would not be, uh, I don't think that would be an honest thing to do. So. Toll free number tonight, 855 free. It'd and be knows? terrible to see Free Talk Live creep up the uh, only rankings chart for the internet. That's not the only one. There's another one out there. Then why are you using this one? I what just don't we... remember what the other one is. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a news guy you are. I'm Mind not a like news a guy. I'm a talk trap. show host. This, 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 this kid's is why you don't smir- smoke the marijuanas. Oh, I was forgetful <laughs> before I smoked When cannabis. was that? When you were 12? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so back to the story here. Dare Scientific Board. Let's see. They talked to Sue Rush, who's the president of National Families in Action, which is a uh, you know a drug drug education group supposedly. She told us that Dare's Scientific Board has not met for more than two years and is no longer in existence, and said the listing of the board on the Dare website is here's a shocker misleading to the general public. When asked about the D.A.R.E. publication of a satirical article as a factual piece, she called the action foolish and said that it is not conducive to the anti-drug message that the group is trying to communicate. And it's interesting because, well, you know, I can give them the benefit of the doubt on having some old, outdated information on a website like freekeen.com or freetalklive.com, my two largest sites that I, that I sort of tend to. There's a lot of content between those two websites, and... If you were to go and look at every single page of the site, I guarantee you'll find some out-of-date information that, you know, I just haven't come across recently, so I haven't thought to change it. Uh, If you do, feel free to bring it to my attention, and I will do that. Unlike Dare, who will leave it up and pretend like they still have a scientific board two years after it had been abolished. 855-450 free. More on Dare coming up here. What's your story with Dare? You can tell that to us. It's Free Talk Live. This is Shaquille O'Neal. And the Shackettes. Reminding you that anytime, anytime is a good time. Good time. For the cooling, drying, fresh scent of gold bond powder spray. Like after the gym. Or a crowded elevator ride. Or golf. Or working with farm animals. Or a hard day's work. Like sports casting. You said it, ladies. Stay cool with gold bond powder spray. Stay cool with gold bond. <laughs> Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. 
When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 you can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you can join us here on the radio waves by dialing toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. DARE, the Drug Abuse Resistance Education Network that has for years been propagandizing your children with a bunch of lies and misinformation and some valid info. They probably, you know, when they're talking about heroin, they're probably giving you some some valid info in DARE. But honestly, it's been a while since I've seen their curriculum, so I don't know how overblown it is or sensationalized it is, but I suspect well, they, it is. They won't tell kids that it used to be available in drugstores all heroin. across America. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cheap as well. And they certainly wouldn't tell them that they could go in and buy them. Like they, as a 10-year-old in fifth grade, mm -hmm. could go into that drugstore and buy an entire bottle full of heroin or laudanum. laudanum. Or and guess <laughs> what? <laughs> there wasn't a problem. No, there wasn't. It wasn't a problem with kids well, using Well, I wouldn't or... say that there wasn't a problem. Uh, I mean, It affected about 3% of the population. Right, I thought but it was that's 1%. Not that... What's that? I thought it was 1%. I thought the law enforcement against prohibition said 1%. Affected I'd is say different either than... way, okay. 1 to 3% is not a problem. And certainly it was not a uh, problem for children back in the day either. Right. Well, kids, um, you know, back in the day before many of these prohibition laws went into effect, you'd have uh, young men on the farm drinking beer at pretty young ages. Um, you know, it was often watered down beer, but that's what they drank, um, you know, when they did their work and, and that sort of thing. You know, water was of uh, questionable nature at that point. You never know when you're going to get beaver fever. So they would, uh, they, they brewed a lot of their uh, drinks mm -hmm. and then people just got used to it. Even when water got better, uh, people got used to drinking the stuff and it was a, you know, it was a, it was a habit. Everybody was drinking. So Dare's been called out. They posted a false article, a satirical piece, claiming people had died from the use of edible cannabis in the form of candies. Not true. Dare got called out. They pulled the article quietly, didn't publish any kind of correction. And further, they ended up getting called out on the fact that their scientific board has not met for over two years and one of the members of the board, when contacted, said he's not part of it. And he didn't say he never was part of it, but he certainly said he was not part of it. And there is no scientific board at this point. Uh, they were talking with a lady from National Families in Action about all of this. And she said that she believes marijuana is an addictive substance that uh, science shows, quote, she claims that when 9% of first-time marijuana users become addict, addicted to it and 25 to 50% of daily users become chronically addicted, she said, pointing to statistics published by the National Institute of Drug Abuse, we were unable to confirm these statistics before the publishing of this article. 9% of first-time marijuana users become addicted to it. A lot of that's an interesting claim, but 
I've never heard that marijuana is a physically addictive product. It may be psychologically addictive, uh, but you could also make the argument that most drugs are psychologically addictive. There was an interesting study that uh, tested crackheads and methamphetamine users like abuser kind of users, I guess I should say, people who were frequently using these drugs to their detriment, and they put them in a, 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 a clinically controlled environment in a hospital. They gave them the choice between a fresh rock of crack or methamphetamine in the morning or a $20 payout three weeks later when they left the experiment. And they get that choice every single day. And what they ended up finding out was when these people knew there was sort of a, a light at the end of the tunnel or you know that they could see the uh, the end of the rainbow, so to speak, this pot of gold sitting out there where they would get cash. 20 bucks is hardly a pot of gold. but if No, 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 every day, $20 right. per day every time they were offered uh, this. So they could either take the crack or they could take the 20 bucks later. And so they get the crack right then, or the $20 three three weeks later. They took the money. Yeah, you can get a lot of crack with that. Well, no. <laughs> they would have gotten the best crack possible right uh, then in okay. the moment, like medically Why pure. Why wouldn't they do that? I don't. I mean, because I don't advocate for crack. I don't think it's a good drug at all, but like, why wouldn't they take that offer? That I don't was understand. the fascinating part of the, the study. Was right, that, you'd think it was a, if it was $100, you might understand, yeah, but 20 bucks, it still. seems like, is what crack costs. I don't know. Well, right. So they had the choice between instant gratification for what was supposedly a profound addiction that they mm -hmm. had or the choice of the sort of long term savings plan. And when they saw that they could have that cash, they went for that and they forewent having the crack. Now, why would they do it? It's because of incentives. And what the author of the study pointed out was that he always believed that drug addiction was more about someone's uh, lifestyle mm -hmm. and how bad they perceive their life to be. Mm -hmm. So are they using the drugs to drown themselves and sort of get away from reality? Or are they using it for some other reason? And the suggestion was that these people, which had come from you know very run-down urban neighborhoods where uh, poverty is, is very common, jobs are a little more difficult to find, they were living not so great lives, and so they were using that uh, those drugs to get away from those lives. Mm -hmm. But when their life changed, when their circumstances changed, and they actually had this sort of like again, like I said, that light at the end of the tunnel, something to look forward to, they changed how they approached their life. In that instant, it, it they were addicted, they were drug addicts, but yet they were able to make that very strong choice. To end their addiction right then. That's it's amazing. so weird because, like, I see if I'm being from Philly, I saw a lot of homeless people using crack. Yeah. And um, I know that, like, Whitney Houston wasn't she famous for using crack as well? Sure. But like, so there's a big difference between a homeless person and Whitney Houston. Well, well just because you've got a bunch of money doesn't mean like, you're happy. Right. Well, okay. It's about hope. It's about progress. The human condition uh, is so much more about progress than where you are, where you're going, than where you are. Huh. So for Whitney Houston, where do you go? This is one of the real dangers of being a rich person is how do you succeed beyond your current station if you're already successful? I mean, if you had a certain level, many people think to themselves, oh, you know, if I've achieved a certain level of success, I'd just sit around and do drugs all day because that's <laughs> enjoyable to them. <laughs> but they won't do it until they get to that level of success because, well, they haven't they, they don't feel comfortable in their lives. So they're going to continue to achieve. Mm. And this is you know, one of the reasons that I don't think uh, that, that, that being rich is all that great is, is that. You know, they get they get a whole new set of problems, problems. that aren't like mine at all. Mm -hmm. Right, having a multi million dollar mansion to maintain and all the stresses that come along with people wanting to know where you are and what you're doing at all all times, and you know, having the what the uh, the, the paparazzi or yeah, sure. whatever, and people judging your life. Um, yeah. Like Whitney Houston had to deal with that all the time. Somebody has people have things to say about her life. Hardly anybody has anything to say about mine. <laughs> well, um, people have things to say about mine. I just don't care. So, I mean, some people handle it better than others, I suppose. I suppose that's the case. But I don't have the money problems that she, that she does. <laughs> in this circumstance, um, you're talking about marijuana addiction and what D.A.R.E. is claiming is marijuana addiction. Nine percent of people who smoke marijuana for the become, first time for the first time become addicted. Um, so the claim is is that you could be addicted beyond this first time. So this nine percent is just 
right, 25 to 50 percent of daily users become chronically addicted, whatever that means. Hey, I don't know what I don't know what they're defining as addicted, uh, because I've smoked the chronic before and it's really good. <laughs> the because mar- marijuana isn't physically addictive. I will say that it's uh, psychologically addictive, but I'll be willing to say that uh, you know a bowl of ice cream every night before you go to bed would be psychologically addicted too. Mm-hmm. You get you get into whatever habits you get into. And mm-hmm. psychological addiction, not the same as physical addiction. People get addicted to the internet. That's not a physical addiction. Well, the argument of the uh, you know that study that I was talking about is essentially that it's all psychological addiction. Yes, I, I have right. heard that uh, yeah. that argument, and I get that that might be. No. I'm just not prepared to put crack cocaine, um, heroin, uh, marijuana, bowls of you. ice cream, and the internet all in the same category. I am with you, but at the same time, we did have that one guy call the show who claimed he was like the, remember the weekend warrior yeah. heroin user? Oh, who, I believe oh, that people man. could do he that. He swore up and down he was not addicted to heroin, that he only used it on the weekends, and he had it under control. I'd never heard anyone say that before, but I believe the guy. Mm-hmm. I believe him, and I believe that some people can do heroin in that manner. I'm not saying that. I just think that there's a difference between physical addiction and psychological addiction. Yeah. I'm reasonably – yes, I, agree if, yeah. I get that pleasure centers in the brain release endorphins that are similar to this or that whenever this or that happens. I don't know. I've heard it all before mm-hmm. in my life. But I'm just – you know, I guess – Maybe these are my biases that are built in over the course of 44 years, but no, crack cocaine and the internet are not equally addicted. Addictive. Let's not going to do it. Let's go to David. He's in Mississippi on Skype. Hello, David. Hey, what's up, guys? Doing a radio show. Go ahead with your thoughts. Yeah, hey, so I called you all last week about uh, <clears throat> the local metro narcotics here and how they bust all these college kids. Well, uh, if y'all were maybe if your listeners were looking for an update, we, we've had a uh, an article come out in the local paper, and it's pretty damning. You know, it's uh, it goes along to talk about the experiences of people who are busted and turned into informants. And all right, stand uh, by. I want to get the update from you here in a moment. This is certainly nothing that's uh, unusual in college towns. Usually, the beginning of a school year, they'll bust some users of cannabis, get them to roll over on their dealers, and then throw them in jail. I was in jail when I was there for civil disobedience with a guy who'd gotten busted because his buyers rolled on him. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, May 4th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.33 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,181 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $243. Antiwar.com reports human rights groups are complaining that there is growing evidence of Saudi warplanes dropping cluster bombs provided to them by the United States on targets in Yemen's northwest. A global ban on cluster munitions was signed in 2008, though neither the United States nor Saudi Arabia was a signatory to the ban. The U.S. continues to export the bombs, which leaves unexploded bomblets across an area, often for years, but the Pentagon insists they only sell to countries that promise not to use them on civilians. Yet, America's own recent history with cluster bombs is checkered at best, having littered civilian populated areas in Iraq and Afghanistan with such bombs, leaving the brightly colored bomblets to be found by children. The U.S. has similarly shipped the bombs to both Israel and Saudi Arabia, nations which have been racking up major civilian death tolls in recent wars. Saudi Arabia is denying the use of cluster munitions, though photographs coming out of Yemen show what appear to be CBU-105 U.S. manufactured cluster munitions, which the U.S. has supplied to both Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates in recent years. The timing is particularly inopportune for the U.S., which has publicly backed the Saudi war, but insists they are concerned about the growing civilian death toll. The Pentagon has also played a support role in the conflict. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. UPI reports two weeks after the death of Freddie Gray, the city of Baltimore is attempting to return to normal after peaceful demonstrations and violent retaliations resulted in a nightly curfew and the presence of the National Guard. Sunday morning, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake lifted the curfew. Sunday afternoon, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan said Guard troops have started to depart. While the curfew and National Guard are credited with helping keep calm in the city, critics say it wasn't without cost. The economic impact was significant, they say as all of Baltimore's businesses were effectively suspended between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Further criticism was leveled at the National Guard's policing, accusing troops of paying substantial attention to the black neighborhoods while leaving white-dominated areas largely undisturbed. The Maryland chapter of the American Civil Liberties Union blasted the curfew, calling it an extraordinary measure that has clearly outlived its usefulness and reminds city residents of their broken relationship with police. The curfew began April 28th, and was scheduled to end May 4th, but officials previously said they could lift it sooner. While some of the Guard's troops left immediately, Governor Hogan said it would take about three days for the pullout to be complete. He added that it will likely take even longer for everything in Baltimore to shake off the impact of Gray's death. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the U.S. Senate Commerce Committee has written President Obama over concerns that a recently reported data breach on the White House computer system might have compromised the personal information of many Americans. The committee chairman, John Thune, said in a statement on Sunday accompanying the letter to Obama, just like any entity that handles personally identifiable information, the White House has a responsibility to notify Americans if the recent or any future breach results in a compromise. The White House said last month that a CNN report report that Russian hackers penetrated sensitive parts of the White House computer system referred to an incident it disclosed last year and declined to comment on who was responsible for the breach. It added that it took immediate measures at the time to evaluate and mitigate the activity. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
Sources close to area man Michael Huesmer confirmed this week the unmotivated 29-year-old loser continues to waste his time living a contented life in his hometown near his closest friends and family members and has no intention of leaving. Former classmates told reporters the directionless bum has no ambition to leave his close-knit community for an expensive and stressful life in a big city and is apparently satisfied with remaining a pitiful nobody for the remainder of his unassuming existence. While most of us with dreams got ourselves dingy apartments and soul-crushing jobs in the city, years ago, Michael just stayed behind, happy to live his humdrum existence of regular contact with his parents in a town of people who express genuine appreciation for his presence. Honestly, it's pathetic. In the time it took you to watch this video, you could have read one of Shakespeare's sonnets, listened to an etude by Chopin, or taken in one of the masterworks from the golden age of Dutch painting. The Onion applauds your excellent taste. For more, keep checking theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, you can dial in toll-free to join us here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. Still to come here tonight, a kidney donation, which was looking good, has now been put on hold due to government involvement. Derek J. has the story, which was submitted by listeners and voted on listener, uh, by listeners like you over on our website at freetalklive.com. It's Ian, Derek J., and Mark in the studio. We're going to go back to David. He's in Mississippi via Skype. David, you were calling to follow up about a story that you had told us previously wherein college students have been arrested and then encouraged to snitch on their college dealers of uh, cannabis and other drugs. And you said there's an update on that that story yeah so um after uh, the buzzfeed article came out that was uh, all about that then uh, the narcotics bureau made an official statement on the local news and then buzzfeed came out again and the libertarian party here the local libertarian party uh sent a strongly worded letter to uh, the powers that be uh, and then since then, the local paper, which for this is a pretty big deal, has put a pretty one-sided article out uh, against the narcotics unit. Really? Yeah. Uh, I mean, they let them have their say, but you know, she quotes three or four different people who've been involved with Metro Narcotics, not not under their. Uh, uh, employment, but like people who've been either snitches or, or arrested or almost snitches. And, and what's the gist um, of the editorial uh, opinion? Uh, well, she she's it's not really an opinion. She's actually it's not in the opinion piece. It, it, so this is a news piece. Yeah, it's a news piece. She's talking about how all that happened, and she's she's uh, it's sort of like a. a what would you call it? I guess a, uh, oh, woe is me. Look at these kids that getting arrested. But, but I mean, that's a uh, woe is them, really. But You're saying that's the position of the author in the newspaper? Yeah, but it's not an opinion piece. They're reporting it as news. I'm just surprised they would do that. Because well, it's hard to separate of opinion from news. I mean, if you write a news piece that is obviously one-sided, uh, that, you know, then... You can claim there's opinion in there, right? Like there's opinion in Fox sure, News, sure, there's sure. opinion in yeah, yeah. Uh, MSNBC oh, yeah. and all that. So you were pleasantly surprised to see this show up in the local paper then, huh? Yeah, because normally they're pretty well in the pocket of the mayor and the alderman and all that. Mm. But uh, surprisingly, you know, she even quoted the mayor and stuff, but most of it was talking about the impact that it has on the kids and the impact that it has on the, the snitches and the the... People who go to jail, uh, talking about how, you know, I, I went to jail because I wasn't going to snitch on my friends. And people talking about I was scared because I was 17. Yeah, and that was uh, the situation that I found uh, the guy at, that I met at jail who was there because he had customers. He was a minor ca a cannabis dealer on the Keene State College campus. He had a whole ounce of weed when the cops came into his home with shotguns pointed at him. Uh, in the middle of January, took him in his boxers and threw him outside into the snow 
uh, all of this over an ounce of marijuana, and he ended up with, uh, you know, some pretty serious, you know, felony charge and was in jail for that. An ounce of flowers. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, David, for the call tonight. Appreciate it. Toll-free number here, 855-453. It's um, when, you, when you think about rights, right, um, when you're dealing with this, uh, you know, this criminal justice system, many times uh, the arrests are for victimless crimes, like in the case of these college students, uh, college students, high school students, young people worldwide, they just don't know their rights. They don't know what they can say and what they can't say. They've uh, spent their whole lives at 17 years old, you have never been the authority figure for real in your life. Somebody else always has. And oftentimes that person has your best interests at heart, right? Like most of the teachers you're dealing with, your best interest. Your parents, their best interest, your, your best interest. Or what they believe your best interests are. Well, yeah. I mean, it's the, they're doing the best they can with what they have. Okay. As a poli- police officers, however, when they catch up with you, not so much was my experience um, in dealing with uh, law enforcement when it came to asking questions. I would have been far better off in uh, you know, my case if I would have just said, you know what, I'd, I'd like to have my attorney. No, really, when I told you guys that I wanted my attorney, what I meant was I want my attorney. And, th- you know, so many Young people, they don't know, and I didn't know, um, and it's it's really a tough situation. It's very difficult to feel bad for somebody who's committed some kind of violent crime with a victim if they, uh, you know, fall prey to the depredations of the uh, judicial system and, you know, give some information that perhaps they wouldn't have, they shouldn't have given, um, you know, if they had a lawyer present. I appreciate your suggestion, Mark, but how many young people can have an attorney? I mean, how many people are 17 years old or 18 years old arrested say, oh, yeah, let me get my lawyer? Well, um, they don't really know who their lawyer is. But of course e- not. The worst lawyer. Well, they have a lawyer. Do Every- they? Yes, they do. Um, they have the public defender. If they have— uh- Not necessarily. In New Hampshire, for instance, if you are not facing jail time for a charge, then you don't get a public defender. Fine. Um, the answer to your question, officer, is you'll have to ask my attorney. You don't know who my attorney is, neither do I. Oh, interesting. If you want <laughs> you figure that out. <laughs> me to have an attorney, you can go ahead and have one appointed for me. Oh, I but like that. Until such time as there is a lawyer between you and me, mm. I as a US citizen is one of the few rights I have. I'm not answering any of your questions. Wasn't it your sir? Li- wasn't it your line, Mark, where uh, if the cop asks you who your attor- attorney is, you say something like, you're the detective, you figure that out. <laughs> do some police work, pal. <laughs> that's a fine That's a fine thing Yeah, that's going to gonna get them on your side. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it, they're it's, not on your side. It, it really, at that point, if they're asking you questions, it really doesn't matter anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if you are a young I heard that male people- and they're asking you questions about a crime, I, I, you know, that you didn't call in to report... You're in trouble. You're such a hypocrite, Mark, because people get away with uh, things all the time when they talk to the police in a nice way. I hear about this anecdotally. Oh, I've never had it happen to me. The police are always mean and nasty and arrest me. But other people, they can talk themselves out of tickets and all kinds of things. So- I'm not worried about a ticket, Derek J. Please, let me give this. Oh, excuse me, officer. Do you want $200 to go the F away? Here's 200 bucks. Get out of my life and never come back, sir. 200 bucks means nothing to me when you're talking about putting somebody in prison for many, many years for something that they didn't do. Fair enough. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So, uh, let's see. We were talking about the D.A.R.E. story. I think we pretty much wrapped that one up. If you want to come back around to it, you're certainly welcome to join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Let's jump into what was when we started the show, and this these things are always changing on our website because you're... You, Go there and vote anytime you want on the top stories. Vote them up if you like, down if you don't. This was the top story when we started the show tonight, Derek Jane. You've got it. Yeah, I want to tell you about Christine and Josh. They're two people who live in Maine around the Portland area, and Christine needs a kidney. She is not healthy right now and needs needs a kidney. So she did something a little bit unusual. She advertised on the back of her car that she needs a kidney, advertised her blood type and her phone number, and... Uh, said call or text, and this guy Josh responded. So I want to tell you wow. about them. Unfortunately, they've hit some roadblocks thanks to the federal government. 
Well, they're just trying to protect you. Well, here's the story from BangorDailyNews.com. A community's overwhelming generosity has put a highly publicized kidney donation on hold. Officials at Maine Medical Center in Portland said unprecedented fundraising for the donor has raised concerns about a federal law that makes it illegal to be paid for an organ. Just to clarify, so hmm. this donor had a fundraiser and people voluntarily gave f- f- to support this donor. So and now, the recipient didn't have the fundraiser that's to pay correct. for it. The donor said, hey, I want to do this for this lady. Yes. G- can you give me some money? And the internet community, maybe even some wow. listeners of this program, gave to him out of the kindness of their hearts saying, look at this great guy stepping up and giving a kidney to a perfect stranger. Mm. Now he might be in trouble. Oh, wow. Let's get into more detail on that here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Good thing you got the federal government out there keeping you safe from yourself, huh? It's Free Talk Live. Get the stinky dog away from me. PD stopped eating. All his hair fell out. Mounds and mounds of fur. Our hairballs have hairballs. Bad breath and bad gas. Chew himself raw. Sticky, gooey, smelly. She scratched incessantly. At least $5,000 in vet bill. And all it took was one container of Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Adding Dynavite to their diet has every single dog in my kennel looking better than they have ever looked. The shedding has stopped and the itching has stopped. Tons of energy, no more bad smell. She has gotten this puppy look. Her coat has sheen. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. My vet was completely blown away. Dynavite's the bomb. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you got to keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Bitcoin, we love Bitcoin here on Free Talk Live. And you can also get Bitcoin as well as Litecoin and Dogecoin over at ExpressCoin.com. It's your best choice for getting cryptocurrency. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business. And whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, you can go and get your cryptocurrency with money order or check over at Express. ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone via their app, which you can download at ExpressCoin.com. Don't forget, coupon code FTL will get you up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no fee at all. So go to ExpressCoin.com. Don't forget, code FTL. And again, that's ExpressCoin.com. Derek J., you are sharing with us a story that was voted, submitted and voted on by listeners like you over at FreeTalkLive.com about... A lady who needed a kidney, she put an advertisement on the back of her car. Somebody took her up on it and said he was willing to donate one of his kidneys. He apparently, I think it was a he, he put up uh, some kind of a, an Indiegogo or fundraiser, GoFundMe, something like that. One of these independent fundraiser projects. Someone else. I'll get to Someone that. Someone else did it on his behalf. So That's he didn't right. even do it on his own? Yes. He didn't ask for it to be done. Somebody just voluntarily said, this guy's brave and you've that got work it. out. Tell me more. He just wanted to be a good example, said Ashley Dahl Layton, whose husband Josh Dahl Layton, age 30, is offering his kidney to a stranger. Ashley said Josh, a father of three himself, didn't think twice when he saw a plea for a kidney on the back of a car. Wow. I give, I have given well more than a gallon of blood. Um, I get the donating parts of your body to make people, uh, you know, lives better. I can't imagine going through highly invasive surgery and giving up a kidney. I'll grant you that a healthy person only needs one, but you never know when you're going to be that not so healthy person that needs two, right? Like you, anybody could have a kidney problem at some point in their life. Um, and it, I'm just amazed. I, I'm amazed at what uh, the kind of individual that would just go ahead and say, yep, I'd be happy to give this perfect stranger a kidney. Ashley, his wife, said, quote, his first thought was, this mom, she's a mom. Her son needs her. As it turns out, Josh is a perfect match for Christine Royals, age 24. She's uh, type O blood type, which is quite rare. What? Type O, isn't that quite rare? No, no, it's no. not quite rare. No. I thought that was the rarest kind. What's AB. rarest? AB? Yeah. Oh, well, all right. There you go. We Shows went to the I know. schools. Thanks. <laughs> so, I didn't pay attention in school. My <laughs> husband, I thought, so is it O that can donate to anyone? Yeah, or? it's a universal donor. But um, cannot receive from anyone, right? I believe it's O positive can donate to anyone, O negative can't. Don't look at me. Well, she's type O. So here we go. My husband has, in a sense, turned into her hero, Ashley said. Mm. But a transplant transplant comes with costs. So yeah. ro Royals organized fundraisers to cover the Dahl Layton's family's expense while Josh is out recovering. So, so hold on. on. So the, the family of the person who needs the kidney organized the fundraisers? Yes. Got uh, it. But someone, it, it's not clear in the article. It says someone else. So it wasn't Royals uh. herself. Someone else, according to this article, started a GoFundMe page that unexpectedly raised more than $48,000. Wow. 
Well, I would think that, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know how long it takes to recover from having your kidney cut out, but I would imagine that we're probably talking— probably not a weekend. Yeah, I imagine we're talking a couple of months. I also don't know what the gentleman does. If he is a, say, a a carpenter, um, you know, he's going to be, it's going to take longer for him to get back to work than uh, if he says, if he has some kind of sedentary job um, like a talk show host where he sits (laughs) around and runs his jaw the whole time. At Josh's first evaluation at Maine Medical Center on Wednesday, the dollar amount raised eyebrows and concerns. Quote, They're concerned that people's outpouring of generosity for our family could be perceived as selling an organ, said Ashley. Wow. I can see how they might come to that conclusion. Well, when that's a federal crime. If money was ever an incentive for Josh to donate, Ashley said, no way. Officials at Maine Medical are frustrated, too. (laughs) They said the donor and patient are top priority, but... They also have to make sure they don't violate a 1984 federal law. So they'd be an accessory if they knew, right? If they knew that money was raised for this, and now they do, and they go through with it, then they would essentially be assisting with committing a federal crime. That's right. Dr. John Vela Mm. of the Maine Transplant Program said, quote, There's an unprecedented element to this case. Vela said the average out-of-pocket expense of a living organ donor is $6,000, meant to cover travel, lost wages, and miscellaneous medical costs. I wouldn't have called lost wages out of pocket, but okay. The 1984 law doesn't specify where the money should come from. Vela said the hospital isn't making accusations. Clearly, this was We're just going to call the cops. (laughs) Well, he says this was an altruistic offer. Well, who did call the cops? That's not clear, right? Like, this had uh, publicity, so it's fair to, you know, that it's... It's possible to believe that just because of the publicity, the government goons got wind of this, that not anybody necessarily called them in on it, right? Could be. Maine Medical Center is consulting outside legal counsel and other healthcare organizations for guidance on interpreting the law. Ugh. This can be extraordinarily difficult. Do you remember when the seasteading folks called in here on Free Talk Live maybe three months ago, Ian, uh-huh. and they talked about what they were the they were trying to figure out what was legal about having a medical boat offshore and doing sort of medical procedures 13 miles out in international waters in international waters and the the fact of the matter is basically they could get no answers that mm. the from the bureaucrats the, the FCC simply didn't have answers for them we don't the know the FCC was, I, I'm sorry the F, um which one was FDA? it? FDA. FDA, maybe. I, I think that was the uh, the bureaucracy. Um, they, you know, they would ask the questions, and the bureaucrats are like, "We don't know the answer. Essentially, you'll have to do it, and then we'll go after you, um, you know, legally, and then you can fight it in court. And after you've spent hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars, we'll know the answer." Yeah. And I mean, this is just how broken this system is. The government says that at this point, everything that we do not you know, mandate that you do, you are not allowed to do. Meanwhile, this lady is suffering. That's right. Well, and so is he. Uh, Quote, at this point, we're not viewing it as a deal breaker or a reason to proceed with the kidney donation. Uh, So it it will continue, says Vela. What will continue? The kidney donation donation is going to go Oh, I thought it was frozen. I thought it was uh, putting uh, putting that on hold. Well, uh, according to Vela, no. uh, it's, It's not, to him, a reason to... Um, this is the donor. Yeah. But the hospital's no, no, no. Vela worried is, about it, Vela right? is the, um, the doctor. Okay. And, so um, the guy at the hospital is now saying, we're going to go for, th- yes, for this? Yes. Okay. It seems it seems like they are going to go through with it. It's just that um, they're seeking outside counsel right now. Wow. So, And he said that Royals, the, the woman who needs the kidney, is now on dialysis. Why so. shouldn't someone be able to sell a kidney? I mean, that's what's being uh, proposed here. Is, this is what's illegal. They're su- suggesting that maybe this is one selling one's kidney by proxy, sort of. Why shouldn't you just be able to sell your kidney? 855 450 free is the toll free number. It has been put on hold. Oh boy. 855 450 free. More coming up here. You can share your thoughts. It's Free Talk Live. 
now you may have heard a bit about bitcoins but did you know bitcoins are now over an 8.5 billion dollar market and did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept bitcoins listen if you're already earning bitcoins or trying to make money in the bitcoin market you've got to know bidbit.co why because bidbit.co is where you can easily receive bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for bitcoins you heard right whether personal or business you can now buy sell and auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. This is novelist Tom Robbins. When my mother was diagnosed with glaucoma, her conservative Virginia physician told her there was only one treatment that might ease her pain and save her eyesight. That treatment was medical marijuana, which he could not prescribe. I offered to get her some and teach her how to use it effectively, but my father objected because marijuana was against the law. So my mother, who loved to read and walk in nature, was condemned to grow cruelly, unnecessarily blind. Tragedies like this happen all the time, but they don't have to keep happening. To learn more about medical marijuana, call the Marijuana Policy Project at 1-877-JOIN-MPP or visit them on the web at mpp.org. Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Join us toll free, 855 450 free is the number here, 855 450 3733. You can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you. Uh, once again, that's freetalklive.com. Uh, also, you can enjoy, we've got a brand new advertiser here on Free Talk Live, your favorite magazines via Next Issue. Next Issue is an app that is available for iPad, iPhone, Android. Uh, you can go and you can grab a 30-day free trial with no commitments, and you can cancel 
anytime. Plans start as low as $9.99, and one account can be shared with up to five people. This is kind of like the Netflix for magazines, only mm. better, with access to all of the latest issues of some of the most popular magazines in uh, in North America. So you can go and see more of, about this by going to nextissue.com slash FTL and get signed up for your free trial. So I went and I uh, got on Next Issue and... You're presented with the list of the uh, all the magazines that, mm-hmm. that they have, and there's you know there's like the specialty magazines, like you know popular uh, mechanics and. You call that a specialty like magazine? That. I'd call that a general interest magazine. Okay, well whatever. Um, anyway, hmm. uh, not everybody cares about mechanical stuff, so I mean I would consider general interest like people, uh, which they also have that as well. Yeah, they have so. all kinds of articles on things in uh, uh, popular mechanics. I I recommend it. For, I've never read it, so couldn't tell you. I think it's for everybody. Well, anyway, there's all kinds of different magazines People, is the point I'm no, trying to make. Not not for everybody. Okay. Well, anyway, whatever you say, Mark, there's different magazines for people with different interest types. You know, everything from Maxim uh, to, I, I don't have a list in front of me, but there was a bunch of them. And so I just went and I selected the ones I liked, and uh, they... You can just look at them in uh, sort of not really PDF form necessarily. What happens is when you pull up the most recent issue, it actually kind of gives you a table of contents that you can look at. Mm. And then it'll pull up the actual pages that when you click on it. So I, I pulled up Consumer Reports. All I right. looked at, great magazine. Yeah. yeah. I looked at, uh, the, you know, looked at the table of contents and I spotted something that looked interesting. Bitcoin. There was an article hey. about Bitcoin in the, I think it was the May issue of Consumer Reports. Now, if you want to go back issue after issue, you can certainly do that as as well, uh, but it was called Bitcoin Beyond the Buzz, and it was kind of just like an introductory piece to Bitcoin. I thought it was actually pretty fair and uh, and well written. So you can go and try out next issue. Again, uh, you can actually get over access to over a hundred and fifty magazines for less than the cost of two magazines. At the newsstand, all of your favorites and more. It's like a buffet of magazines. Go and give it a try. The 30-day free trial is available for you. Just go to nextissue.com slash FTL and get signed up today. That's nextissue.com. It's a great deal, but it's only available if you go to nextissue.com slash FTL and get signed up for next issue. Sounds like a good deal. I mean, you know, one, two issues versus 150. Yep. So, uh, and they'll send you notifications too. You can have notifications on your phone that will let you know when there's a new issue out of your favorites, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So sounds like a big savings. Let's uh, jump into your calls and thoughts. Clipboard is listening in Manitoba. Clipboard, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, good evening. Hi I've there. Just been listen, listening to your program about um, uh, someone uh, trying to donate his kidney. Uh huh. I, I live in Manitoba, Canada. And when I was living in Winnipeg, uh, my uh, oldest brother uh, needed a kidney badly. He was on dialysis, um, uh, and uh, he felt like killing himself uh, mm. sometimes, you know, because wow. he was having a terrible time. And uh, so I offered to uh, donate uh, a kidney. And uh, now in Manitoba, we're not supposed to uh, be paid for donating a kidney. Uh, but my brother did, uh, after the uh, operation, he uh, gave me a small car, which uh, only lasted a few months, you know. <laughs> uh, and then he, in his will, he left me $5,000. Okay. Uh, as a donation, you know, for my uh, consideration of uh, donating him. But that's something that was kind of off the books and the authorities didn't that's get right. wind of it? That's right, they didn't. Because it didn't happen right there, there wasn't a lot of publicity surrounding it. In this case, in the uh, the main case that Derek J was telling us about, this made headlines, right? Like this lady put right. this request on the back of her car. She was advertising openly, and then when this guy stepped up, somebody in the media got wind of that. And advertising it got out there. works, folks. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, for better or for worse, in this case, it also likely brought the uh, the federal government down on them. So, uh, clipboard. Anything else you want to share? Uh, yes, uh, uh, the after effects. Okay, uh, I believe um, it might have taken me about uh, six weeks to uh, recover uh, substantially. Okay. But I'm now 71. This is, um, uh, let's see, about uh, 16, 17 years later. And uh, I find that in the afternoon, I quite often have to have a nap for maybe five, ten minutes or, or half hour because uh, my one kidney is not able to handle all the 
um, uh, body weight, you know, mm-hmm. as if I could, um, as two kidneys could. Like I'm told that your my one kidney should increase in size in size to replace that other kidney. Yeah, but I don't think it did. You know, it wasn't able to. Do Full size. Now, how long did your brother get extra in his life uh, because of this? Oh, well, about uh, about 12, 12 years or more. Wow. And then he uh, died from cancer. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, thank yeah. you for for sharing the story here tonight. And I have it here on my uh, call screening software clipboard that you are listening via satellite. Are you listening on free to air? Uh, yeah. On. Um, let's see, I think it's. Uh, um, Galaxy 19? Yep, that's right. That would be uh, it's like yeah. music to Ian's ears. Free to air. Thank you for the call tonight. Right. I'm glad you're out there, you're and thanks for finding the show. Uh, that's a uh, fr- free to air listener here in North America. and We've talked about our African satellite uh, fundraiser that's going on right now, which, to my knowledge, is not federally illegal to donate to. And it's my understanding <laughs> that you can actually tax deduct your donations because... Uh, the satellite fundraiser is being run by LRN.FM and Free Talk Live, and that is a project of the Shire Free Church and donations to churches. I'm not an attorney, but it's my understanding that they are tax deductible. So uh, that's like some people, that's a big deal, right? They pay taxes and they want to have these deduction things. Well, you can do that uh, by donating to africa.lrn.fm, and that'll help get our satellite signal, which is what that gentleman was listening to. That same signal will be available to listeners in Africa. Who are also, there's a lot more, I think, people in Africa who listen to free-to-air satellite than here in the United States. In the U.S. or in Canada, in his case, people are less likely to watch and listen to free-to-air satellite because, well, they can afford to have fancy satellite. They can afford to have, you know, $70 a month satellite. They don't free- have to put up with the, you know, what, what free-to-air puts on the air. It's not as, you know, it's not as polished as the... Uh, uh, as say direct tv or something like that well, i like to think lrn.fm is a polished product but a lot of the content on free to air is not so uh, polished a lot of it is uh, very hard to understand or watch some of its foreign language uh, which is actually brings makes it to kind of an interesting flavor to experience it but if you want to help reach people in very poor parts of the world with the ideas of liberty the African Satellite Fundraiser is an excellent way to do that. Go to africa.lrn.fm to contribute. And actually, somebody, when I put out a notice about this recently, because there's only about two weeks left in that fundraiser, just actually just under two weeks at this point, but when I put the word out there about that, somebody came back and they, this is a Free Talk Live amplifier, they were they were like, well, why should I support this? You know, I, I feel like the money should really, that you guys are spending, should focus here in the United States. And uh, and look, I I don't think an extra few hundred dollars a month going towards things in the United States is going to tip the scales on whether or not the United States gets more free. Um, but I think that sending the message of freedom to Africa could really spark some ideas that you know heretofore have not been discussed in certain corners of that continent. And we've seen that happen already by our caller, Akko, who has told us of people in Africa, in Cameroon specifically where he lives. He was having little meetings. Yeah. And I think that's really sort of important because... Um, imagine that uh, a secessionist group, by the way. Yeah, that we would go to. You know, somebody might, uh, some liberty patriot kind of person, runs off to Africa to try to help the good folks in Africa. You know, you're going to look very much like an interloper. These ideas have to be organic, and we all got taught some way or another. So go to africa.lrn.fm and thank you in advance for doing that and share the link as well. There's more free talk live coming up here. Shouldn't you be able to sell your kidney? I say, yeah. Well, I did it. I finally left the empire behind. And now that I'm safely settled in Chile, I'm gathering with others like me to build a new community called Fort Galt. Fort Galt is designed to be the ideal home base for professionals and their families to live and work in peace. If you're ready to ditch the super state and bring your business to freer lands, visit us online at fortgalt.com. That's fortgalt.com. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam, my best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at alcor.org. 
A L C O R dot O R G. Mention my name and I get a free year of membership. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins, but did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction your product and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. Hey, Free Talk Live here. We'll take your calls toll-free about what you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Drop on by freetalklive.com. And enjoy the features there. You know, somebody called in last night at the very end of the show and threw us a question. We were talking briefly about virtual reality. And they asked this question, well, what's this magic leap? They'd heard about a magic leap. And I didn't really know enough to answer the question at the time, but I said we'd look into it. I did look into it. So we can talk about that here in a little bit. Our toll-free number is 855-453, plus the latest on Baltimore, or some of the latest from Baltimore and what's been going on with the mainstream media there and the curfew as well. We can talk about all of that and more, including questionable stocks that uh, Mark would like to talk about. Our toll-free number here, 855-453-DEREK-J. Derek J, uh, was there more to the story that you were sharing with us previously about this kidney donor who what well was going to donate a kidney very generously and some supporters set up a fund for him to help you know, cover the costs of donating a kidney, which is not a cheap thing to do. You're not going to stay at work. You're not going to be working at that six time. Six weeks. The guy who called in to say he'd done this, at least six weeks you're going to be out. Yeah. So um, 
this apparently is illegal to raise money for one's kidney donation or any kind of organ donation in the United States and Canada. Maybe. Maybe. And I want to I want to clarify something that it's, I said earlier since my language might yeah. have been confusing. Is it on hold? Is it not? Yes, it's on hold. What I was saying uh, was they're a quote afraid from it's the illegal. doctor. Yeah, but the doctor doesn't think it should be on hold. He says uh, at this point he doesn't view it as a deal breaker or any reason not to proceed with the kidney donation. In other words, I think he's saying, look, we'll take whatever uh, the federal government will throw at us after this. Let's save this woman's life and deal with the consequences later. Yeah, but here, does here. he get to decide that, or is it the attorneys for the hospital who ulti- ultimately will make that decision? Well, I think that it's always the attorneys yeah. that get to make the decision. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, this dude could go into the operating room and start cutting anyway, right? Like, if you really want to, he could do hospital civil disobedience. God bless case. him, we'll run a fundraiser on the air for him and his legal <laughs> uh, fees here on Free Talk Live. For what it's worth, we can't even yeah, put terrible. a satellite in the air in yeah. uh, Africa. <laughs> Don't ask me to fundraise for you. I'm terrible at it. But Alexandria, uh, Alexandra Glaser, president and CEO of the New England Organ Bank, said the organization strongly supports living donation to increase the availability of organs for transplantation. Quote, this generous gift should be at no financial cost to the living donor, Right, she said in a statement. You're already giving up a kidney. You shouldn't have to give up thousands of dollars on top of that. Indeed. So for this reason, uh, the New England Organ Bank supports reimbursement of donation-related costs when consistent with state and federal law. Of course. As an ethical way to remove financial barriers to living donation. I want to know what they think about it when the state and federal law gets in the way of a living donation. Mm -hmm. I mean, all these groups that come out and and make some statement, we really like the idea of giving people kidneys as long as the government bureaucrats, because the the politicians aren't taking a stand on this. This is government bureaucrats. This is paperwork. This is lawyers saying, oh, I'm not entirely sure how I interpret this paragraph here mm-hmm. in subsection 49. Uh, I mean, you know, this is disgusting attorneys sitting around and saying, well, I, it looks like she's going to have to die. Right. And they're not doing anybody any favors here. Western civilizations uh, p- teetering on a parapet here. Somebody might be getting an extra too many uh, d- hundreds of dollars for donating a kidney. Dear God, what would happen? You've got and t- here's what I'm asking right now. You out there, do you think there's some reason why I shouldn't be able to sell my kidney? I mean, I suppose you might be able to make the argument that my mother grew it. Like, that it's her kidney that she should be able to sell it, but I kind of consider it mine. And if it's mine, I should be able to sell it. I can sell uh, my yeah. car. You claim that I own my car and I can sell it. If I don't own my kidney, what the hell do I own? It's crazy. I mean, they are basically saying they own you, right? Like, by saying you can't sell yourself. I mean, we know they say you can't sell yourself sexually. Now they're saying that you can't even sell yourself a, p- a piece of yourself to to donate. I People mean, that uh, those those that control something are the ones that own it. And the government claims to control yeah. the sale of your kidney. So in that aspect, they are superseding your ownership. Either you own the kidney or someone else does, right? Like, it's not an unowned thing. It's your kidney. Either you own it or somebody else does. If you own it, you can sell it. If you can't sell it, somebody's claiming authority over that kidney that isn't you. And I'm asking you, please, the listener, call in and explain to me. They got nothing, Mark. No one's called on this. They're not going to call in on this one. It's absolutely ludicrous. But everybody would come out and say, oh, you're, well, you know, I don't know, this whole idea, if we, allow people, to, if we allow people to sell their organs, then... The mafia. Uh, yeah, the, the, you're right. People will be coerced into selling their... Doctors will be holding guns to people's heads while they cut their organs out but of them. But wait a minute. The reason why people are getting organs cut out of them, if that's happening, is because it's illegal to sell organs. So then the mafia does get involved in that case. It's not that the mafia would get involved in organ sales if they were legal. If organ sales were legal, then you'd have two consenting parties getting into an agreement, as you do in this case, where, you know, everybody's consenting. The only people who don't consent are the men with guns calling themselves the state. So if you've got consenting adults in this case then it should be no one's business. It should be completely legal, and you should be able to sell your organs to the highest bidder or to 
give them away and take a donation or whatever. Who cares? Why is it any of your business, government people, or those of you who are the busybodies who support the government? Because some, surely somebody within the sound of our voices uh, does support the governmental position on this, whether they work for the state or not. They will take that position in their mind, but they're not willing to do it on the radio waves. If you are, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE or Skype in at username LRN.FM. Well, I just wish they would go ahead with this because obviously this woman's life is on the line. Uh, yeah. And it, I think that if they go ahead with it and take the consequences later, like if there are um, legal battles, they could take so long that the person could die of old age. <laughs> I wonder what the ramifications are. I just got an e- um, email. You remember when we had Asia run like hell guide dot com on the right. air? Yeah, the guy who uh, basically yeah. he does brokerage for a Bangkok hospital, a big giant Bangkok hospital that has all the modern uh, situations. I guess these two people could fly over there. It's like eight hundred bucks for um, airfare over there. They could fly over there and actually do it there. They could do it, but that would still not necessarily exempt them from whatever the criminal charges. The consequences might be. are back here, right? Like it'd be very right. interesting to see what that the case is. It, well, look, the this doctor may or may not do it, but those doctors definitely would. And correct. then what happens when you get back, right? Um, those doctors wouldn't face any penalties. You could get the job done and then face, you know, whatever might come after that. Because right now it's the the hospital that's holding this up. Their legal department is saying, "Whoa, we don't know about this. We don't want anyone to go to prison here." Um, and, you know, but they've already turned that. it over to the feds at this point anyway, right? Who's turned over? The hospital. I thought the status was that they were refusing to move forward on this while they were, are researching it legally. That's you know right. what research means? Somebody ring, ring, picked up and said, hey, government bureaucracy in charge of making sure the people die. Can we have an organ transplant? This person looks like he got $45,000 in fundraising. No? Okay. I mean, you know how this conversation went. Every government bureaucrat's answer to everything is, nope, sorry. If they, if you no, get an answer usually, from them. don't say sorry. If you get an answer <laughs> from them, the answer's no. Yeah. Right? Like, it's never like, oh, sure. Sure, go right ahead. It could be we don't you, have a law on that. They could very well be arrested when they get off the airplane you know, as they come They back could. This isn't legal advice, this. but I can tell you yeah. you'd be alive to get arrested. More no, like- that's true. Great. Now you've got a new kidney in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, would they go after the recipient? No, they Probably wouldn't. not. They'd right? go after the donor. Or would they go after the person who fundraised for the donor? Mm, could be. Yeah, so I don't know who is at the greatest risk in this particular case, but certainly it could. the job can be done as soon as they're willing to leave the United States to do it. It's so weird to me because it's such a different situation than two people consenting on a sale of something. This was a man who volunteered to donate, and then people on the Internet said, attaboy, or right. they said, I like what you're doing, or why couldn't they just give to this guy because they like him? Let's talk to uh, Susan in Utah listening in St. George, KZNU. Hello, Susan. Hi. Um, I was calling about this kidney thing because my brother Ernie passed away January the 23rd in Colorado. Sorry to hear that. Thank you. Um, and he was really young, and, and the uh, kidney donor people, they called me as soon as he had a cardiac arrest, and they tried to take his organs when his driver's license said no. And this is really scary to me because my daughter is in St. George and she needed his kidneys, which probably would have been a match because he's my natural brother. Mm-hmm. But these people at Delta Montrose Hospital or Delta County, Colorado, they t- I said, what did his driver's license say? I'm already traumatized when they're trying to resuscitate my brother. And then they try to take his organs. And I guess Colorado has the highest. Um, you know, donor transplant where they take people's organs when they're not even, and I don't see why this person you're talking about, you know, should have such a hard time. My daughter is very ill. She's had diabetes since she was six. Susan, thanks for the call tonight. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. 
Strike two, base is loaded. Watching the game again, I thought you were booking our vacation hotel. Done. What? We're staying in America's Best Value Inn, and I scored a triple play when I joined their free value club. Really? You get 15% off, a room upgrade, and late checkout when available, plus free Wi-Fi and continental breakfast at most of their 1,000 hotels. Wow, that really is a slam dunk. Uh, home run, honey. I think you mean home run. Score big this summer at America's Best Value Inn at abvi.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at Africa.LRN.FM. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. Africa.LRN.FM. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, May 4th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.33 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,181 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $243. Antiwar.com reports human rights groups are complaining that there is growing evidence of Saudi warplanes dropping cluster bombs provided to them by the United States on targets in Yemen's northwest. A global ban on cluster munitions was signed in 2008, though neither the United States nor Saudi Arabia was a signatory to the ban. The U.S. continues to export the bombs, which leaves unexploded bomblets across an area, often for years, but the Pentagon insists they only sell to countries that promise not to use them on civilians. Yet, America's own recent history with cluster bombs is checkered at best, having littered civilian populated areas in Iraq and Afghanistan with such bombs, leaving the brightly colored bomblets to be found by children. The U.S. has similarly shipped the bombs to both Israel and Saudi Arabia, nations which have been racking up major civilian death tolls in recent wars. Saudi Arabia is denying the use of cluster munitions, though photographs coming out of Yemen show what appear to be CBU-105 U.S.-manufactured cluster munitions, which the U.S. has supplied to both Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates in recent years. The timing is particularly inopportune for the U.S., which has publicly backed the Saudi war, but insists they are concerned about the growing civilian death toll. The Pentagon has also played a support role in the conflict. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. UPI reports two weeks after the death of Freddie Gray, the city of Baltimore is attempting to return to normal after peaceful demonstrations and violent retaliations resulted in a nightly curfew and the presence of the National Guard. Sunday morning, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake lifted the curfew. Sunday afternoon, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan said Guard troops have started to depart. While the curfew and National Guard are credited with helping keep calm in the city, critics say it wasn't without cost. The economic impact was significant, they say as all of Baltimore's businesses were effectively suspended between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Further criticism was leveled at the National Guard's policing, accusing troops of paying substantial attention to the black neighborhoods while leaving white-dominated areas largely undisturbed. The Maryland chapter of the American Civil Liberties Union blasted the curfew, calling it an extraordinary measure that has clearly outlived its usefulness and reminds city residents of their broken relationship with police. The curfew began April 28th, 
8th and was scheduled to end May 4th, but officials previously said they could lift it sooner. While some of the Guard's troops left immediately, Governor Hogan said it would take about three days for the pullout to be complete. He added that it will likely take even longer for everything in Baltimore to shake off the impact of Gray's death. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the U.S. Senate Commerce Committee has written President Obama over concerns that a recently reported data breach on the White House computer system might have compromised the personal information of many Americans. The committee chairman, John Thune, said in a statement on Sunday accompanying the letter to Obama, just like any entity that handles personally identifiable information, the White House has a responsibility to notify Americans if the recent or any future breach results in a compromise. The White House said last month that a CNN report that Russian hackers penetrated sensitive parts of the White House computer system referred to an incident it disclosed last year and declined to comment on who was responsible for the breach. It added that it took immediate measures at the time to evaluate and mitigate the activity. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Millions of Americans are irrationally feared dead following a train derailment near Wilmington, Delaware. Less than 200 people were aboard the train, but because no names have been released yet, countless more are being imagined trapped inside the wreckage by worried parents and overly anxious friends. And the list of imagined victims is growing by the minute. From brothers-in-law who live in Delaware, who usually drive but could possibly have been on that train, to friends who went to Delaware on a business trip and may have been next to the tracks for some reason when the train derailed. And sadly, we're getting reports that but even those who have never been to Delaware are now also among those irrationally thought killed. Oh, and we are just now getting word from Homeland Security that they're now warning people their fears may spiral into a wholly new fear that their loved ones never existed at all and are just byproducts of a drug-induced lucid dream in which their consciousness is currently imprisoned. Such a shame since this is reality. There is nothing beyond this to believe otherwise. It would be folly. This is the Onion News Network. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program. Whether you want to talk about organ donation or sales of organs, which I say should be legal, and I've yet to hear any reason why they shouldn't, because it's a consensual activity between people who somebody wants an organ, somebody wants to give up an organ. Why shouldn't they be able to receive some sort of benefit for giving up a piece of their body? The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can receive benefits, financial compensation for giving up your time and that's pretty important right giving up our time time is our one of our most precious resources we have a limited amount of it and another limited resource that we have is the pieces of our body as well right so time and your physical person are very limited resources you can sell one but you can't sell the other yep if you decide, if I decide this evening to go home and cut off, uh, you know, a digit, uh, not a digit, but a, a knuckle from my uh, pinky finger, no one's going to say anything about it, mm -hmm. right? Like I wrap it up and I put a little Bactine on there and uh, a band aid and uh, you know, fine. <laughs> Maybe I cauterize it on uh, with a with a hot awl. You've gone crazy, right? Well, you would. I, I, I'm I'm willing to yeah. uh, say that that's a pretty crazy thing yeah. to do. But in all likelihood, no one's going to do anything about it. No. Nope. I mean, nope. I suppose that if, you, somebody, if you, somebody asked me what happened to your finger and I said, I cut it off with a knife and then cauterized it with a hot awl, you know, maybe they'd get the cops called on me and then, you know, something might happen three days or whatever in a Baker Act or what, I, whatever. But ultimately, no one's going to say anything about me cutting off a piece of my body. However, if I wanted to sell it, it's a much bigger deal. So you can share your thoughts here with us on that or whatever's on your mind. Coming up, uh, questionable stock purchases and certain consequences of that. We can discuss that as well as uh, D.A.R.E. We talked about the D.A.R.E. 
program, the very beginning of the show. And so if you want to share uh, your experiences with D.A.R.E., that's still open and on the table for discussion as well. Toll-free number tonight, 855-453-FREE. James in Kalamazoo, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, James. Hello. Hi there. Uh, first off, um, Derek, I love it when you're on. I have to listen every time you're on. Thanks, so James. I can't, I can't wait uh, to, to make it to New Hampshire and actually meet you. So, um, Actually, all of you, but uh, I'm a real oh. big fan of Derek J. Thanks. Uh, Feeling I, the love. So you anyway. must have seen his movie then, Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Oh, I sure have. That uh, was part of my motivation for uh, for you know moving to New Hampshire to, to do some activism. So. Ah, that's what we love to hear. <laughs> cool. So, all anyway, right, go ahead. Um, I know that, that you've been fishing for somebody uh, to disagree with you, but I'm going to bring something up that kind of solidifies, uh, I guess, your opinion and why I, I actually do agree with you. Um, All right. And I know, it's not, I know it's not an organ, but how is it that women can donate eggs and get Ooh, paid for it? Like good thousands point. of dollars. It's yeah. a part of their body. Um, I donate plasma, and I get paid for that. Granted, mm-hmm. it's not an organ, but it's still a part of my body. Right. What's so, the difference? Yeah, I mean, it's still part of my body that I, you know, that's being donated, and getting compensation for. So yeah. I totally agree with you. I, you know, I, I believe in self ownership, and you know, it's my body. I can do with it what I want, and I, I just think these pencil pushers, you know, maybe there's some sort of, maybe there was some innocent thing that they were trying to protect, but you know, when the government tries to fix any problem, they only make it worse in every case that I've ever seen. So, um, Those are great points. You, know, that, that, <laughs> yeah. you nailed it. I'm willing to say 95% of the cases, uh, there's always these things that you can sort of hold up that the government manages to do reasonably well. I found a few throughout the years. Um, I'm not willing to go 100%, but w- if you have a failure rate like the government, no other organization could possibly have survived. You have to have forced extraction of wealth to have an organization that is this incompetent. Yes, absolutely. Good call, James. So, anyway, uh, thanks a lot for uh, what you guys do, and uh, I look forward to being in New, Sh- New Hampshire soon. All right, man. Thanks for the call tonight. Of course, he's talking about the Free State Project, the idea of moving liberty-minded people together so we can get active to achieve liberty in our lifetime. Uh, you can actually join us here in New Hampshire coming up in about a month and a half, just over that, for the Porcupine Freedom Festival. We are literally weeks away at this point, several weeks away from Porkfest, uh, the Porcupine Freedom Festival, the the 12th one, right, Mark? I think you said the 12th one. I think that's right. Uh, pork, yeah. Porkfest.com is where you can go to grab your early bird tickets. Uh, Porkfest, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. It's basically a, a week's worth of camping, or you can hang out in a hotel if you want. But being in the woods on a, on a campground for a week with around 1,500 liberty-oriented people, there's all kinds of great things to do, sort of camping fun stuff, and uh, you know, there's fun activities for the kids and families and couples and you know singles. I mean, there's just all kinds of things happening at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It is something that I think the liberty community here in New Hampshire and around the world looks forward to every year. It's the biggest party for libertarians uh, out there and, and voluntarists and anarchists and even minarchists. It's the closest thing to heaven on earth that I've ever experienced. But yeah, I want to get back to James and Kalamazoo's okay. point. He's got me thinking uh, through a whole different vein here. Like People donate their hair and sometimes get paid for that to That's right. have wigs made. Uh, co- in college, I saw a bunch you of ads. You didn't get money for it, though. No, I donated it. Yeah, yeah but yeah. some people do get paid to, to make wigs and stuff. Then uh, in college, many students will do things uh, like sell sperm as well, you know, Mm -hmm. counterpart to to eggs. So there's all sorts of body parts that are sold. So what's the difference? Well, like, what? Where is the line drawn? I if can it tell requires you surgery? That the blood banks make money off of the blood that they collect. Uh-huh. They aren't they you know they don't break ranks and they don't offer you money for it, but they'll do things like get vouchers and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So they'll offer you a free dinner and they'll of course give you the little snacks and juice and stuff that they have there. So there's, you know, compensation however meager for just is something as simple as giving blood. And well, hospitals will even sell foreskins of infants. To answer or to, I guess, further look into your question. What of, do people is, do with those? 
It's cosmetic. I don't know what they do with it. Okay. Sort of, Let me look it up. You sort of asked this open question. Well, is it because it's surgery? Yeah. Isn't harvesting eggs from a woman, doesn't that require some sort of form of invasion into their body, right? Like, if yeah. it's not like sperm where you can just shoot right. off into a cup. You can't uh, just push a button and have them shoot out the end. Right. No. So some, somebody's <laughs> reaching up there with something or they're cutting in. I don't know how an egg harvest happens, but it's, it's one way or the other. <laughs> right. Would we uh, say we're not attorneys? We're really not egg harvesters. Yeah. <laughs> so, ladies, if you know more, dial in toll free. 855 453. But that sounds pretty invasive to me. So obviously it's not the invasive factor. So what is it? I I have no idea. I mean, it's just like maybe it's one of those things where somebody came up with this should be illegal. And that's and like you can't just, grow back. But a kidney, supposedly, what they told this guy is that his one kidney would grow stronger if the other one was gone. It would get bigger and stronger. He so said he didn't think that happened, though. He didn't think it happened, but that's what he was told. So apparently somebody in the medical community believes that. The kidneys will grow bigger if you uh, cut one out. Mark, you asked the question, what do they do with the foreskins that are sold? Uh, a quick Google of foreskin sold led to a search result. Uh, that two cosmetic companies is the, the first uh, search oh result, and there are tons of articles about All right, now I bizarre. see the conspiracy. Are they making cosmetics I, out of foreskins? Yes, facial cream is <sighs> made from foreskins. Ladies, Some did facial you know? cream. Probably oh not. Goodness. Wow. That's disturbing. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, take control here uh, of the airwaves. I, by the way, I mentioned this thing, the magic leap. Somebody asked about it last night. I don't want to get lost and sidetracked, Mark, into your story about the stocks. We'll get into it here. But somebody did ask, what is the magic leap? We were talking about virtual reality. This is from March 19th of this year on TheVerge.com. What is Magic Leap? In 2014, the company got a half-billion-dollar investment led by Google itself. The product is reportedly a set of glasses that project hyper-realistic images into the world. Well, that's not really what it does. That It projects it into your eyes, I would imagine. Projecting <laughs> from a pair of glasses into the world right. isn't going to be very effective. That's what we call a laser. Anyway, uh, I don't know if it's done with lasers, Mark, but they do it If somehow. you're projecting light into the world... Oh, I see. Into the world. I meant into your eyes here. Right. So, your uh, eyes are just receivers for light. The company has promised to let the rest of the world in on the secret soon, revealing some potential uses of the technology. Uh, for now, though, we're struck trying to, or stuck rather, trying to deduce what their product is, how it works, and whether it's really as good as advertised. Then, uh, on the same day, they published a video, and I'll post this on our Facebook and uh, and our Twitter, which shows what is ostensibly a video view of what the Magic Leap looks like with somebody in their office. They pick up a gun, which is a computerized gun, and then they start shooting at like computer robots that are attacking them in their office. Cool. So it's augmenting their reality with essentially overlaying a video game onto it. It looks pretty cool. We're coming up. Free Talk Live. Are you completely free of stress and fatigue? Well, of course not. You aren't alone, though. Now think about how nice it would be to begin relieving some of that stress and fatigue. Let me introduce you to a product that has and is working for me. It's called Youthful Greens. Youthful Greens. It's packed full of nature's nourishing, cleansing, and alkalizing greens, providing a powerful dose of whole food nutrition in each serving. Youthful Greens helps increase overall energy levels and reduce all that fatigue and stress on your body. And right now, when you visit freegreens.net or call 800-333-6923 and order your one-month supply of Youthful Greens for only $29.95, you get another month's supply for free. That's two months of Youthful Greens for the already low price of just $29.95, plus free shipping. That's saving you $45. Visit freegreens.net today or simply call 800-333-6923. And hey, you're welcome. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 
800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to may be even more nervous than you are. And the way things are now, your references have never been more important. Here are three tips. First, know that employers are checking. Every hire is under the microscope these days. Second, they won't just be checking references you provide. Figure that all of your ex-employers will get a call and be asked, would you hire him or her again? Third, assume you will be Googled. So before you apply, remove all those parts party animal photos from your Facebook page. Even if you're not in the job market, effective communication skills have never been more important with money and attention so scarce now. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day -day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited here. Dial in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype in here at username lrn.fm. An inspiring and supportive community for entrepreneurs and their families. Fort Galt is a new real estate development intended to cater to entrepreneurs and freelancers in Chile. Individualism doesn't have to be lonely. At Fort Galt, self-reliant men and women will live and work for their own rational self-interest with the ability to easily collaborate and socialize with one another in an environment that promotes their mutual well-being. It's not a retirement resort. It's not some vast region of sprawling estates. It's a fresh, vibrant center of art, innovation, education, and creative capitalism. Imagine being a strong, ambitious producer without being surrounded by those that would demonize you for your efforts and success. It's the ideal home base for young professionals, freelancers, small business owners, and their families. The only true requirement is that you're self-sufficient and flexible enough to relocate without depending on others to provide for you. Together with others like you, you can learn and grow while honing your skills, developing your, developing your crafts, and thriving without constraint. You can live passionately with the freedom to focus on your true callings without compromise. If this sounds like the community you've always dreamed of, go to fortgalt.com. Right now, fortgalt.com. Let's go back to the phones and the fun. Then coming up, some uh, questionable stocks. What happens when things go wrong? Uh, Mark, you've got a story about that that ties into Free Talk Live. Uh, Ethan is on the line first, though, in Missouri. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. Hey, I'm so glad you guys took my call. That's what we I do. Was it's just calling Free Talk Live. Because I was just calling because Brian, or I mean Mark on the show, reminds me so much of Brian the dog from Family Guy. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Has anybody I have, ever I've only briefly that? watched Family Guy. Yeah. I know is there's it, a dog. Is it his that's voice? White. Is it his attitude? What is it that reminds you of the dog? I mean, just even like even what he talks about. Like, watch Family Guy a few times and just think about it. Now, the dog is like <laughs> super in a super intelligent dog. That... I thought it was the baby that was smart. Oh, yeah, well, the right. baby's smart too, but the dog is also this super intelligent dog. Oh. And it. it 
But it's not saying that Mark's super intelligent. Oh, no, I am. <laughs> not saying that he's not Absolutely. super You're mistaken if that's what I'm you're just, not saying. <laughs> I was just saying, I was watching Family Guy, and I'm listening to your guys' podcast a lot lately, and I was just thinking, oh, my God, it's like it's Brian is a dog, or Mark is a dog. Well, I'll, have to, I'll have to pay guy. more attention to this dog. Cool. I'll, I'll take your word for it. I've seen like clips of the show. I can't even say if I've ever seen one all the way through, but it's looked really good from the it's, clips I've seen. It's it's a hilarious show, and I actually it, it kind of falls along the same lines. I mean, I think I think you guys would agree with a lot of the subject matter anyway. I thought the guy I mean, who wrote it was like a some kind of flaming Democrat. Well, yeah, he's an atheist. I mean, you guys, and he he's not he's not oh, well. I'm sure he's a Democrat, but. I don't know. Sometimes, you know, you guys uh, say things that kind of uh, are in line with, you know, what some Democrats think. Yeah, they that's believe, certainly true. You know, yeah, you know, and it's just because they call themselves a Democrat doesn't, you know, I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, keep up the good well, work. Thanks, Ethan, awesome. for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Interesting. And, yeah, Derek was nodding his head. He says, yes, Mark, that you apparently resemble this dog. I could totally see it in in the voice and characterization. Well, somebody is going to agree with this. They can uh, go ahead and email me their most convincing clip that I am this dog. Yeah, maybe put a clip Mark of Mark. At freetalklive.com. Maybe put a clip of Mark saying something and then the dog saying something, like right next yeah. to one another. Well, if you want to do that, then I'll post it up on the Facebook page. If you want to do uh, time, if you want to spend time, uh, you know, making some kind of video or something like that that I can post, that's fine. I'd just be interested in, in hearing the case. I, I, don't, I don't know much about this show. Honestly. All right, so Mark, uh, you wanted to talk about a stock, yeah, um, it's and what has happened as a result of well, what has happened to a stock that we one time promoted on this program, right? Coming from finance.yahoo.com, apparently, um, recently, Morgan and Morgan announced that a class action suit has been filed in the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York on behalf of the purchasers of Forcefield Energy Incorporated. That's FNRG. Uh, the securities between, uh, I guess, September 16th, 2013 and April 15th, 2015. Uh, that's the period. And the complaint alleges that the company and certain of its officers and or directors violated sections of the Security and Exchanges Act or whatever. And if you purchased Forcefield securities during that class period, you may uh, be eligible to you you're eligible to participate as a lead plaintiff and if not you can be uh, a supported plaintiff a absent class member or something like that so apparently there were some dealings that went on inside uh, force field energy and this is a client that we had what yep. three years ago i don't know what like the that. time frame was it seems like a few years ago yeah, two or three years ago and they came to us and they bought some advertising. Bought some advertising with was, their stock. Yep, right. I was convinced that the stock would go up, which I personally don't really care for uh, the idea of you know someone paying in stock. But you convinced me to take it, and then they basically. paid cash the second time though. Did oh, you, they did. Are you, you, I don't you're going to take that cash. Part. I don't remember that okay. part. Okay, um, I I cashed it in uh, the yeah. stock and it went up from. Just like I said it would. But we um, had to hold it for a certain period of time. Right. It was uh, some kind of special classification of stock yeah. that you had to hold for a period of time. But We held it for like a year or something like some, that. I think it was six months or something like that that we had to hold it. But I, I, I believed in that six-month period that the stock was going to go up. I'm pretty sure I said things like this, you know, that you should – that it's going to be a six month period or whatever. I said these ter this terminology when I talked about Yeah, that about was part it. of the deal was that you would get the special buy in rate or something, right? Right. And in that time frame, it went from like four twenty to like six fifty. And that's a nice bump in your money. Uh, now, that's the kind of profit that we made on the deal, and I'm happy to have made that kind of profit. Um but I I wonder to myself do what kind of responsibility do I have as a talk show host when I advocate for some stock or another? Does that stock have to progressively go every single day upward for my word to be honest and true? Or is there some period of time after I make a buy recommendation that I no longer am responsible for my buy recommendation? I feel like- I don't think you you're know, ever responsible for suggesting- You're responsible for the words that come out of your mouth. No, no, no. I don't think you're responsible for what happens to a stock, whether or not you believe it should be bought. I mean, if you are getting on the radio and saying, I think this is a good company, I, you know, I have this stock- and you know, I suggest that you get some as well. But at the same time, letting people know, hey, stocks are risky. You probably we shouldn't do say invest. things like that. Absolutely, you probably shouldn't invest not, things. 
this point that I'm trying to make here is, you know, you put in, we put in uh, disclaimers on that. We like do. You could lose your money. This is a possibility when you invest. So don't invest what you can't afford to lose, right? So we made all that crystal clear. So as far as I'm concerned, you're absolved from responsibility for what happens to the stock. You're responsible for what you say, but you did, I felt like you did your due diligence. I mean, you researched the company, you talked to these people, you were convinced that this was a good product that they it were, was a that good they were product. making, <laughs> you were convinced that the people that were offering it were on the up and up. There are allegations now that they weren't. This hasn't been proven. This is a, uh, an open uh, civil case, right? And, and whether they were... Uh, okay, so I was convinced the stock was going to go up over the course of the next 12 months, and I was right. You believed that? I believe. Well, yeah, yeah. I was convinced. Yeah. That's what I believed. And um, so... I was correct in my belief. I don't know whether I communicated that every single time that I did a live read that that was kind of the time frame that I was thinking about. And certainly I'm not looking to, when an advertiser advertises, I'm not looking to say, you know, find every bad news story about them either. We're coming up. Free Talk Live. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. There are two types of advertising. Poll advertising, like Google AdWords, where a consumer goes looking for widgets near them and you try to pull them in with your ad away from the other widget purveyors. Then there's push advertising, where you push your message out about your great widgets and attempt to convince people who weren't thinking about widgets at all that what they need in their life right now is your widget. Radio is push advertising. In the course of a week, there are probably over a quarter million good folks listening to Free Talk Live, and they could hear your message. We are having a sale right now, and it ends May 15th. 200 30-second ads for $1,997. That's like 10 bucks an ad. Find another show with that kind of rate with 150-plus stations. Email me, Mark Edge, at marketfreetalklive.com, and I'll set you up. You don't need to have an ad. We'll produce it for you. Buy 200 30-second ads by May 15th and get them for less than $10 a piece. It's a big savings, and you don't want to miss it. Email me, Mark, at freetalklive.com now. Are you tired of governments around the world killing innocent people? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin is money that cannot be inflated or controlled by any state. By continuing to use their money, you're perpetuating the killing. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available to you now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. It's WeUseCoins.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Talk Live. There's going to be no food by February. Oh, that seems a little extreme. I find that hard well, to believe. Well, watch it happen. Hope you find Christ. Oh, mm -hmm. good luck, buddy. Thanks. What really turned me away from religion was the fact that most of them are so intolerant and nasty. What do Your you mean? life will suck unless you find Jesus. Well, I had Jesus a long time ago, and he didn't really do anything for me, so I got away from that. Right, and I can tell you that uh, if you want to have if you want to have that attitude with people, yeah. like, Good well, you better find Christ, or you're going to burn in hell. Yeah. Then uh, you know. <laughs> Good luck converting people. Yeah, I really want to hang out with people like you, there, Keith. <laughs> I really want to hang out with people like you. So I'm sorry to those good Christians out there listening that that aren't like Keith. 
but it's the it's the loud mouse like Keith that uh, that do real damage to your religion and, and how people feel about it. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Join us here toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Joining you in studio, you've got Ian. Derek J. And Mark. And it is not too late to get some berries ordered from Mom for Mother's Day from Sherry's Berries. It's a fantastic idea. I've, Mom's really going to enjoy them. You're going to enjoy them, too. I hope you get to share. Is all you have to do is go to berries, that's B-E-R-R-I-E-S dot com, and uh, order them. There's a microphone in the upper right-hand corner. You enter FTL. You're going to be able to save up to 40% off. They have uh, really some really great rates on really premium berries. These things are delicious. I, I love them. I just had some. We were talking about them in the first hour, and I thought, oh, yeah, I've still got a little few in the fridge. So I went and got some Sherry's <laughs> berries, and they're delicious. Uh, they're, you will put likely nothing better tasting in your mouth. They're so good. Go to berries. Mom will love them. Mom will love them, and you need to, you need to consider Mother's Day coming right around the corner now. B-E-R-R-I-E-S dot com. You put, uh, in the mic. You click on the microphone. You temp. You type in FTL. You'll see all the deals there. They have lots of options. Even some flowers you can kind of couple with it. B e r r i e s dot com. Coupon code FTL. Lots of people. Lots of talk show hosts are offering this. Please use our coupon code. If you don't, the statist win. All right, so berries.com, code FTL, and our toll free number here tonight is eight fifty five four fifty free. So, uh, Derek J., you're sort of the outsider to this conversation that we're having about this uh, stock that we had talked about previously on the program. Yeah, but I remember you guys talking about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, how do you feel about this? And uh, you've heard now that the stock, there's some questions about it. There's a lawsuit, apparently. The allegations are what that the uh, that the guys behind the company, some of them had been involved in some questionable stocks in the in the past. Allegedly. I'm not entirely sure what the the thing is. I haven't I gone through that's it. What it said I didn't have a financial stake, but somebody posted it up on in the amplifiers group and yep. just sort of, hey, if you bought this stock, take a look. And it kind of convicted my soul, as it were. You know, I told people to buy this stock. And if I didn't communicate entirely well, like, huh. But I, I, well, you I, recommended the purchase of the stock. I you did recommend it. I also anyone. believed that um, I recommended it. I, I believed that it would be a good purchase, sort of in the short term. And I believe I used, you know, terminology like that. But I didn't come on the air and say, "Okay, now's the time to sell your stock." Um, you know, I wouldn't do that. It's for not your an business to do that. I mean, if you buy stock, then you decide when to sell that stock. And in mm-hmm. the case of what you're talking about. It was a certain minimum of time you had to hold it, so kind of like a CD or whatever, where you have to have on, you know, yeah, hang on to some kind of preferred for stock a or certain something. period. Of time. Well, what what it was was you get a preferred price on the stock was what it was if you yeah. were willing to hold it to agree to hold it for this minimum of six months. And I don't recall, Mark, whether or not you had said anything about you expect this to go up in the short term. That I don't recall, but it doesn't matter. You don't know what's going to happen to the stock. You can have your belief about what's going to happen. And, you know, this was some fancy technology that they uh, were offering up. And in theory, that should be good for longer than the short term. But you never know what's going to happen with the company. Maybe the management will fail and do a very poor job. Or maybe they'll be outcompeted by another competitor or whatever. You don't know what co- is going to come around the corner. Yeah. Uh, or an unexpected lawsuit like this in this particular case. Or it could just be the rest of the market. So, like, you asked me what I think. Yeah. Well, I started in college uh, trading stocks uh, just to get my feet wet and get some experience that way. And that was in 2007. And everyone knows what happened then in 2008. And so I I learned a lesson not about the companies that I chose, which were awesome. Uh, Dolby, Netflix were a couple of the companies that Mm -hmm. I invested in back then. They did poorly in 2007 and 2008 just because of the environment they were in, not because those companies are bad companies. Sure. So you don't know what's going to happen. I don't think you should feel guilty about this, Mark. I mean, you did you you did your due diligence. It wasn't like you just 
took some cash from this company and went on and pimped their stock on the radio. I felt like I wouldn't have gotten on board with it because you you wanted you know you came to me and you said hey here's what's happening here uh, you know this is the offer this is this company this is what their product is and you know you came to me because I didn't feel necessarily like oh god or do I want stock right if somebody you know? says the word stock to Ian he like it's like a turtle he pulls his little head into the show <laughs> he's like I don't yeah. understand this whole buying a piece of a company thing why. You're it's not that I don't understand really? it. I'm just not yeah, interested no, it's, in it. It's fear. It's it's totally fear based. It's not my kind of gambling. I'm not in, I'm not interested in it generally. But you know, you pitched the company to me because you had taken the time to like talk to these guys and you know interview them essentially off the air about their product. And we ended up doing an interview on the air with them. I think as well. Either that it was an after show or something like that. I don't know. I'm yeah, pretty maybe. sure we had one of their executives on on the program. Okay. At some point. And, uh, you know, I felt like you looked into it. And so I said, yeah, Mark, I'm willing to go along with you on this. And, you know, we we did this deal and we talked about it on the radio and we included the appropriate disclaimers. I don't feel like there's any guilt that you should have at all. I mean, if somebody is upset about it, well, you should have sold when it was higher. Well, yeah, they could also call in at 855-450-FREE and let me know exactly. Like at this point, I'm not willing to take guilt in this because I kind of feel like I – you know, said the things that I intended to say in the course of doing these ads, but maybe somebody doesn't feel that way, and I'm kind of interested in what they have to say. Yeah. Has anyone addressed this to you? Have they said, like, Nobody hey. specifically, but uh, somebody has said um, that maybe you guys should just not uh, advertise stocks on the air, which... I don't know if I'm prepared to say that. I mean, that's. I, I mean, stocks I, are just one of many things. That am you can I going to exclude for... some category because uh, you know? We, I mean, we know that stocks go up, stocks go down. Yeah, I wouldn't be prepared to exclude that as a category um, for advertising. No way. No, I think everyone. Buyer beware. Everyone knows the stock market goes up and down. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you don't know that, you shouldn't be buying stocks. And we made it pretty clear that there's risk involved. And p- plus the fact that if you bought into this deal that they had, you had to have a, you know, a, not an unsubstantial amount of money to be able to buy in. Period. There was a floor, yeah, that's true. A, minimum a minimum with which to buy in. So one would assume if you have that kind of money that you are not some rube that just rolled in off yeah. the hay cart. Um, that you also have, you know, you, you understand what your responsibilities are. Yeah, and I'm kind of the rube that, you know, rolled in off the hay cart when it comes to stocks. So that's why I wanted to di- liquidate this as, as quickly as we could when all was said and done. I didn't want to hold on to this simply because I didn't want to forget about it and, like, you know, come back years later to find out the company was gone or whatever. If you don't pay attention to your assets or your, you know, what could potentially be an asset, uh, if you don't pay attention, then, you know, again, buyer beware. You get what you get. Yeah, we could if if you hadn't have been ready to liquidate, I could have said, "Hmm, this uh, this is going well, and uh, I'll, I'll continue to roll with it." And we might have ended might up, have. yeah, we might have ended up because I did push you on it, like because yeah, I recall you know, that now because I remember I said to you, "Hey, you know, we should sell this," and then I kind of left it alone, and then it took several months before I came back around to you and I said, "Hey, when are we going to sell this?" And that's why I say I think it was more yeah. like a year rather than six months, Mark. That second was, time you reminded me, I'm yeah. like, "Oh, yeah, the price is good. Let's go." Right. Um, and and then it took there was like this thing about yeah, yeah, I was selling it. It was to sell. Yeah, it was a little bit of a hassle because we, you know, more than a little, we brought the church involved in it, and there was like some other things there. Yeah. So yeah, so what can you do? You know, you you live and you learn, and you win some and you lose some, and when you Mm -hmm. invest, sometimes you lose. I'd be interested in anyone uh, either calling in or writing in to say, you know, like uh, showing me in some ways for me to refine the way I do things. But I, I may reject it out of hand. I still, at this point, I'm, you know, I'm not feeling unrighteous. I guess. And also, I mean, we're not this show. I don't want to be this show where, like, you know, these stock guys get on, the yeah. Jim Cramers of the world. I don't care about all that stuff. I'm not interested in. in I'm sure doing he that doesn't lose any sleep over at night over making a bad pick, right? Well, right. I mean, how he's picking stocks all the time, right? right. And uh, I'm sure plenty of them are losers. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just the game. And so he doesn't get on the air and apologize. Okay, guys, I'd like to apologize last week for recommending RZQ and ZYX and, you know, all these different ones that went down. They, they, you don't do that. Yeah, you you know you just roll with the punches. Yeah, right? that's true. All right, so our toll-free number here is 855-450-free 855-450-3733. We got more here on deck including uh the latest from Baltimore if we get the chance 
what happened? Plus, there's been this attack out in Texas. I want to talk about it. We really it. should talk about yeah. that. It's a big deal. Yeah. So we haven't got to it yet. Maybe we should more. Maybe we should focus it on it on it when we have more time to talk about it. Uh, but it, it's on our radar. <laughs> so if you've got comments, there was a, a shooting in Texas over a Muhammad drawing contest. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Artwork contest? So a sacrilegious thing. 855-450 freeze, the toll-free number. You can join us here and bring up whatever's on your mind. It's Free Talk Live. Kid, this facility is like a ship. So how do I keep us on course without micromanaging every detail? Easy, with Granger. Granger's online tools help give me the visibility I need. I can shop, order, and manage all our activity. Oversee purchases, control costs. Oh, while well, you guys get to order what you need when you need it. I run a tight ship, kid. I run it with Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Learn more at Granger.com slash online purchasing. Granger, for the ones who get it done. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking the dead swarm his home now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape look for survivor max on facebook read reviews on amazon or read chapter one at survivormax.com hi this is steve sanchez and based on a recent study it was found that 57 million americans had legal issues over the last 12 months but only 60 percent of those studied sought out the services of a lawyer why in a nutshell affordability while my friends at legal shield have created a solution that can help you not if but when you need an attorney for as little as 17 dollars per month legal shield will provide you unlimited access to qualified attorneys at an accomplished law firm for advice and counsel on legal issues no matter how serious or trivial for over 40 years and with 1.4 million families across North America, Legal Shield can help you, the loyal GCN listener. Representatives are standing by now to answer your questions, so call them now at 1-855-340-SAVE. That's 1-855-340-7283 or visit them at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Results will vary from case to case. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring signs into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. 
We'll take your calls about anything. Even in these remaining moments, there's enough time for you. If you dial in now, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online with you in studio. You've got me, Ian. Derek J. And Mark. Derek J., your new website is... TheDerekJ.com. TheDerekJ.com, where people will find... All sorts of videos and podcasts. Mostly I've been doing podcasts these days, hosting shows like Freedom Fiends and a gay anarchist sex talk show called Flaming Freedom. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. And uh, you can go to uh, flamingfreedom.com. It's a Flaming Freedom specific site. Oh, but, yeah. But you're putting them up also over at thederekj.com. Yeah, and there's video as well. So enjoy uh-huh. that there. And all free. Download at your leisure. Of course. Uh, but you could donate as well. You're actually doing a fundraiser. Are you still doing the fundraiser for the gun case? Oh, yeah. That's uh, in the New Hampshire Supreme Court. The local police here in Keene have denied me a concealed carry license, and I'm taking them to court. And also now, sort of in relation to that situation, the uh, New Hampshire Senate and House have both passed concealed carry repeal, meaning that— Isn't that wonderful? Mean, meaning that—I I don't want to make—I want to make sure I'm clear on what I'm saying here— meaning that there would be no more requirement to get a concealed carry license in New Hampshire if this bill were signed by the governor. But unfortunately, despite passing overwhelmingly in the—or uh, I don't know if it was over, overwhelming, but Not passing overwhelmingly, in, yeah. in both uh, the House—I was confusing it with cannabis decrim— uh, right. Passing in both the House and the Senate, the state's governor has pledged to veto this measure, which means your case is all the more important now, right? Yes. Yes, it is. And people so, can contribute. The DerekJ.com slash CC for concealed carry. And that'll tell more about the case. And it get gives more you all details. the background, and you can even see the video? first hearing. Yes, there's video from the first hearing. There's video of me explaining sort of the specifics of the case. So go on there, the DerekJ.com slash CC as in concealed carry, and donate. Yeah, and you can watch the hearing where you are determined to be an unsuitable person because basically you're a critic of the police and you don't bow down and kiss their boots. So you aren't allowed to carry a weapon, according to. No, I can the carry a weapon, chief. just not concealed. Concealed. Thank you for clarifying. So you can open carry. Yes. But uh, you'd prefer not to. Yes. And One of the problems with the open carry law here in New Hampshire is is that. If you open carry and then you get into your car, you're no longer open carrying. Am I interpreting the law as we understand it correctly? Yeah, that's correct. I would have to take the bullets out and disarm every time. Every time you step into the car. So if you have a concealed carry permit, um, you can either open carry it or concealed carry it, Mm -hmm. get into your car without having to unload every time you get into your car, and then, you know. That's that's pretty inconvenient. So and unsafe. They effectively disarm you by saying that you don't have a concealed carry permit. TheDerekJ.com. Go check out his site. It's great. Let's go to Chris Cantwell on the line via Skype. Hey, Chris. Hey guys. I had uh, I had originally called in about the uh, the stock thing. I want to real quick say since you're talking about Derek J's carry permit, I I have covered this. There's an article on my website. Uh, uh, shall issue called into question in New Hampshire. Uh, and it is a good cause to donate to because Derek's case is very, very important. I, we talked about this at the uh, the general court with the legislature and all of that with the anarcho lobbyist series. But uh, to to the, to the stock thing, I really quick want to say I've known uh, people who were involved in like pump and dump scams. Okay. And you do I hope have, that that's not what this is getting equated to, but okay. <laughs> well, I don't know. It sounds to me as if you're defending yourself against some allegation is what it sounded like to me from what I heard. I think the allegations only come from me. Okay. Well, uh, in any wait case— Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Somebody said on the AMP forum that we should apologize for something, and I, I, I asked them in response, for what? What is it we're supposed to apologize for? Uh, I'm sorry it happened. You made a recommendation. You shouldn't be sorry for what you did, though. All you did was recommend a stock you believed in, you owned personally, and that was all. And you put up, you know, the disclaimer that hey, there's risk involved. You could lose. What uh, what, what what I want to get out here for for the listeners is basically they they have to do their own due diligence. The 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 right. like these people will buy advertisements, right? And they're and they're not uh, the 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 people who you know display the advertisements are not necessarily now Mark may have done a little bit more investigation than other people had, but uh, since he's saying that he got involved with the stock himself, but it, it, the the advertiser is not 
buying the stock, right? Like, like in most cases, the advertiser is not necessarily buying the stock, or you can't count on the advertiser to be buying the stock. You should not be buying stocks because an advertiser tells you to. This is a call for you to look into an investment right. and make your own informed decisions. And if anybody's telling Free Talk Live that they should be apologizing for advertising a stock, then those people are fundamentally trying to abdicate their own responsibility for doing their own due diligence. You can't expect that advertisers are, are uh, the publishers are advertising things that you need, to, that you should fundamentally spend all of your money on. And I would be well, very careful in any investment that tells you that you have to keep it for a certain period of time because there are these things out there where people are like, let's get all of this attention drawn to this thing. We'll sell out of it, and all these people will be stuck in a contract. Mm. That's the due diligence of the investor, and you really have to be careful about it. I really didn't think that was going to happen in that circumstance. The I don't one... think that you did think it yeah. was going to happen, Mark. I'm not trying to imply, you know, yep. but I'm just There saying... are pump-and-dump schemes out there. Um, I really didn't think this was one of them, and it wasn't, uh, from what I could tell. The one thing that I would say, and to amend what you're you're saying here, Chris, the only, the only amendment would be, I'm responsible, Ian's responsible, everybody on the air is responsible for the words that come out of our mouths. We're always... I I, I, you know, I, I want to tell the truth every single time to my listeners mm -hmm. as I understand the truth at that given moment. I mean, I don't think anybody expects me to be something more than a human being. Uh, but I mean, I did do some research. I believed I was right. I, you know, history has shown me to be correct in what I can remember having um, said. And, you know, we made money on the stock. So... Well, that's the thing. And and I imagine that, you know, people who were had the opportunity to invest in the stock had an opportunity to buy it at one price if they got out right away or one price if they stayed in and they made that decision. That's their due diligence, you know, and, and it's like, uh, you know, if they had maybe bought it at the higher price, uh, you know, without committing to a period of time, then maybe they sell it uh, before that period of time is up and they make some money. These are dil due diligence items. Uh, for for people to uh, look into, and they do have to be really careful. There are um, there are untrustworthy people out there in the investment world, but yep. Mark and Ian are not two of those people, and uh, that's all I wanted to get out there. Thank you, Chris. Good call tonight. Appreciate it. Let's talk to Brian, listening in Iowa. Brian, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. Hi, how are you doing today? Hey, um, I was calling in about the the failed drug war that we are still fighting today. I am not fighting I'm it, but yes, of, I understand where you're coming from. Go ahead. I'm I'm kind of wondering uh, how you feel about it, and then I'll give my opinion on it. Derek J., how do you feel about the failed drug war? Uh, it's really tragic to see so many peaceful people in cages uh, for merely possessing a substance uh, like a flower. You've become its victim. You were arrested for having those flowers at one point. That's correct. So I'm on board. Okay. Uh, I think the uh, the drug war is ridiculous. It's outrageous. It's uh, insane. It's a uh, it's victimizing our friends, our family members, our neighbors, our coworkers, and it's not eradicating drugs. It, there are more drugs now than there have ever been. You've now got synthetic drugs as a result of the war on drugs. You've got things like crack cocaine. You've got methamphetamine, drugs that arguably wouldn't exist if it weren't for the war on drugs that are probably some of the most dangerous drugs now that are on the streets. So the, the war on drugs has had tremendous unintended consequences, and it's time that it ends and that drugs become legal uh, to possess and to manufacture and to sell. Right. I, I, I personally believe that Somebody is going to do something no matter what you tell them, period. And it's called nature. And you certainly shouldn't be criminalized for destroying your own body, whether, whether even the drug, if it is destroying your body or if it isn't. I just think it's a complete outright, I don't know, it's created a lot of things that our federal government wouldn't have done unless, you know, those things were happening. For example, um, you guys have heard of Young Turks, right? Yep, that's right. Okay. They just had a clip on Facebook showing that there is a black site, literally, in the middle of Chicago that gives Chicago police um, the ability to uh, basically abduct somebody, bring them there um, without an attorney or any, right. any sorts of things like that. We covered that and on uh, Free Talk okay. Live. It's pretty scary. They're kind of like disappearing people for temporary time frames. Okay. And, uh, you guys yeah. have heard uh, – you guys have heard of the National Defense Act then, right? 
Uh, you mean the National N- Authorization? NDAA? Yeah, the Defense Authorization Act? Yes, and uh, it was signed into law on what, uh, December 31st, uh, 2012? Yeah, there's one well, they every, do one every year. There's one every year, but the 2012 one's notorious. Well, they're always notorious. loaded up with bad stuff. Thanks, Brian, for the call. We're short on time tonight, but I appreciate hearing from you. We'll be back tomorrow night. You can join us online between now and then and join Derek J for his various shows over at thederekj.com. Coming up, uh, Derek J, you've got... Let's see, up next, uh, Cop Block Radio on Wednesday night, right? That's right. All right, very good. So, uh, folks, follow Derek, and then check us out over at freetalklive.com. We'll see you tomorrow night. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? Take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. Call right now. 800-208-5187. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, May 4th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.33 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,181 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $243. Antiwar.com reports human rights groups are complaining that there is growing evidence of Saudi warplanes dropping cluster bombs provided to them by the United States on targets in Yemen's northwest. A global ban on cluster munitions was signed in 2008, though neither the United States nor Saudi Arabia was a 